Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Education meeting, Queen Anne's County, on Wednesday, April 8th, uh, year 2020. Can we please stand for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance? The Pledge of Allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice, and justice for all. If you remain standing for a few minutes, moments of silence for everyone, all the victims of COVID-19, and God bless all our first responders, everyone in the healthcare profession, and everyone out there who is helping and surviving in this terrible time. Thank you. Have some housekeeping items uh, approve of our agenda at the moment i need an, a an amendment to the agenda for the current action item of 6.01 human resources and bus driver report to be moved to 11.01 after our closed session do i have an, a motion to amend the agenda so moved second second i have a motion and a second any questions or comments on the motion hearing none i call for the vote to amend the agenda to move 6.01 to 11.01 .01. all those in favor say aye. aye aye all opposed say no the ayes have it the motion is carried now i need a motion to approve the amended agenda do i have a motion so move second second thank you i have a motion and a second any questions or comments on the motion hearing none i call for the motion to approve the amended agenda all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. all opposed say no the ayes have it the motion is carried I need a motion to accept the, uh, make an approval of the minutes for the open and closed sessions of March 4th, 2020, and the open uh, work session of March 18th, 2020. So moved. A motion, do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to accept the open and closed meeting minutes for March 4th and the open meetings for March 18th. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motions are carried. Thank you very much for getting through that. Just to let everyone know in the pub, uh, out in the public, thank you all for uh, tuning in uh, to our meeting. We are practicing social distancing. I'm getting tired of those words, um, but they are absolutely necessary at this time. Um, all of our board members are here, a few of our executive teams. Thank you to QAC TV for being here. We really appreciate it. And Mr. Strait, always back there doing his best. Um, at this moment, uh, we have the signing of the Unit 2 negotiated uh, agreements. As I understand it, they are already signed by, okay. Which one is that? Um, that's, I know which one. Unit 2, <coughs> sir, is? Unit 2 is your administrators, administrators and right. supervisors. Did we, did we yes. approve that? Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes. So, um, I, you, Ms. Harper, thank you for uh, allowing me to speak on, on behalf. I do have uh, two copies, uh, two original copies of the signed agreement. Uh, it requires your, your signature and Dr. Kane's signature. I do have signature of the uh, president of ANS uh, and as well as mine and Mr. Paluski's signature. So once we obtain your two signatures, then we'll um, send these documents to get other members of their negotiating team. But um, everything is, is ready to go. We're ready to you know push this forward. And I do have a statement uh, since Mr. Page wasn't uh, able to be here himself because of the circumstances. So I'd like to read for the record um, a statement. Um, and this was sent to me via email and I have an original for, for the record and I have a copy of my files. Uh, Mr. Fister, like years past, tonight's signing of our negotiated agreement is a wonderful symbol of the collaboration and partnership we share at Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Due to the unforeseen circumstances, my members and I are not able to attend the board meeting tonight, but want to thank you for making prior arrangements in order to sign and finalize the agreement yesterday. Please accept this letter on behalf of Queen Anne's County Administrators and Supervisors Association to thank you and your team for a productive negotiation session that has produced a fair and equitable contract for our members. We always appreciate your continued support and look forward to work alongside for you for years to come. Additionally, our members would like to thank Dr. Andrea Kane and the executive team for their support and direction through this difficult time. We are grateful for your leadership and guidance as we move forward together in support of our community. I wish you all the best of health. Sincerely, Michael Page, President and Queen Anne's County Administrators and Supervisors Association. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Do you want to go first, Dr. King? Okay. Ms. Harper, you'll sign on line one, and, and Dr. King will sign on line two. Okay, great.
Mr. Right. Thank, Thank you. Take care of that. Mm -hmm. And I'd just like to echo Mr. Page's words that it, it always has been, since I've been involved, a very collaborative effort. And um, we come to agreement and uh, without too much uh, discussion. So it's been a, an enjoyable experience. And uh, this will get us through June 30th of 2021. And then we'll look to this fall to reopen negotiations for the following subsequent year. So everything's good. Dr. Kane, any words? It's just always a pleasure to work with all of our units, uh, unit two as well. They are easy to, uh, to work with and just amenable. They just wanna do what's fair and what's best for their teachers and students. So it is just so greatly appreciated and we thank them for the nice letter that they wrote as well. Yes, indeed. All right. Thank you thank very you. much. I appreciate all of it. Um, love, our, love our principals and mm -hmm. administrators. So thank you all very much. Uh, we don't have anything about the um, presentations from the board members or the student uh, board members tonight. We're trying to keep this meeting brief and, and to the point. Um, citizen participation, Mr. Smith. And this is going to go, uh, it's out that it would be called into Mrs. Wright? Correct. And after this, okay. We ask all speakers to keep in mind the following. Speakers should and not sign in, but will call in, including the telephone number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer should be submitted in writing. Questions or statements to the board should relate to the matter of general policy over which this board has authority. Comments about actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or the board president. If you have specific questions, the board will make sure that appropriate staff members respond to your questions. The board respects your desire, the right to convey any message freely, but ask courtesy to this board and its citizens to show respect for all. Uh, Mr. President. I have one person here, sir, and I'm, I'm going to uh, hopefully read his name correct. Uh, Mark Newessel, Newsel. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And pardon my fluency, I'm not that good at it. During the BOE meeting tonight, can you provide an update as to what is being done to catch up with other school districts in regards to distant learning? I have friends and coworkers across the country and many have stories of first grade children having class over Zoom, older students participating in virtual science labs and teachers providing remote in-person instruction. My friend from Virginia Beach described how the public schools there have set class times on the issued laptops along with graded assignments. While the dedicated teachers of Queen Anne's County have been providing packets and assignments, we seem to not have the same level of quality distant distance education I see elsewhere. The issue of internet access, access has been stated as a reason. I have not found any location in, in Q, Queen Anne's County where my Verizon hotspot is unable to connect at a speed ample enough for teleconference calls. The price of these hotspots is minimal and they should be distributed to those in need. And thank you all very much for, for sending this in. Does any, was there any more that, Mr. Strait, do you know? Okay. So we do have an extra time if they would like to send them in. Mrs. Wright will be collecting them up until eight o'clock where we can read them again. Thank you all very much. Next on our agenda is presentations, uh, COVID-19 updates. Very good, Mr. Paluski and team. You wanna stay up here, Dr. Kane? Oh, I'll try to go as far as this way to the, <laughs> it's up to you. Well, we we'll usually have an exact team. Come on, member. you're not technology you challenged. Come on. <clears throat> can swing that team so I can see. Socially distance appropriate. Um, okay, let's go with that. All right, so thank you. So the way that we'll do this is there are pages that um, each of the executive team members will present. And so they'll come in and out there in various places in the building or outside of the door uh, listening in so they'll know when their turn comes up. And, and we'll sort of switch out so that we keep um, in compliance with the, uh, the social distancing. So. For the record, Andrea Kane and uh, exec team members are listed on the front. Mr. Paluski, Deputy Superintendent, Mr. Fister, CFO, Ms. Bass, Human Resources Director, and Mr. Pender, Chief Operating Officer. So the purpose of the um, presentation tonight is obviously to give an update on COVID-19 uh, efforts that we have in our district, uh, and also to communicate the major tenets of the Queen Anne's County Public Schools continuity of learning plan. 
So to begin with, just wanted to give a little bit of background on um, the COVID-19 pandemic affecting everybody as we know, whether you're young, old, male, female, uh, globally, this is impacting our, our nation and, and, and the world, no less. A little context for Maryland, uh, state action number one, all public schools were closed on March, from March 16th to 27th. And the next action is that we got the word that we would be closed from March 30th to April 24th. And we're functioning from that point. And the next few slides will be about updates that we, we have for COVID-19 before we get to continuity of learning. So we began with a great deal of communication and we continue to provide communication, not only to our employees and our parents, but for the general public as well. Uh, so there's communication with the Maryland State Department of Education, of course, the various superintendent groups uh, across the state and on the Eastern Shore, very close uh, communications with the health department, the department heads in Queen Anne's County, and um, of course, uh, food services. Just a couple of updates for what's happening with schools. I think that the public and, and everybody would want to know. Of course, the first two weeks of the learning packets have gone out, and that started on April the 1st. Learning devices, um, learning packets for third and fourth graders, they've been distributed. Principals are communicating with their employees and with their students and sitting in on some of the online um, lessons that are occurring with their teachers. Teacher professional development is occurring. Part of the professional development has to do with working in an online platform, um, you know, outside of the, the normal way that we do things, and that's been very well attended. Mr. P may have something else to say about that a little bit later. We're right now planning for the next set of learning packets, so we're doing them two weeks at a time, and the next set of learning packets is being planned. Our counselors, our paraprofessionals, support personnel, uh, they're all supporting learning and connecting with families online regularly, mostly weekly. Special educators are rescheduling IEP meetings that were missed during the first two weeks that we were out of school. Um, and they're also um, working on developing individualized distance learning plans. So, because there are some areas obviously that the IEP is not gonna work for some students. So there's some distance learning that has to happen. We do wanna make sure that everybody is aware that case management services and IEP meetings, they're continuing as we speak uh, via phone call video conferencing with families, whatever the preference may be for that particular family. There may be some changes in special education services uh, that may result in um, some compensatory services being owed. So it depends upon what uh, service a child needs, whether or not we're able to deliver it in a uh, remote fashion. That will help to determine whether we owe services to students once we get back to some level of, of normal. English language services are also being addressed via learning packages and, and online to the extent that it is possible. And now Mr. Fister is gonna talk about finance and payroll to give some updates as to what is happening in his department. Thank you, Dr. Kane. Board members, we're, we're rolling as, as if schools and everything were still open. Obviously, the number one concern for most people is, uh, am I gonna get a paycheck? So yes, you know, uh, we've been rolling. All the finance staff uh, has been in the building and telecommuting to the extent possible. Um, so again, payroll is rolling without a hitch. We don't anticipate any. Um, we haven't had it in umpteen years and we're not gonna have it because of this, this crisis. So we will be moving forward. So all employees can rest assured that if they're due a paycheck, they will get that. Uh, timely, uh, just like they're used to. Um, vendors, of course, are still sending in bills. We're still processing those. Um, purchasing has slowed down, of course, because the schools are not in session. So we'll, but we're still working on two, three weeks of, of purchase orders that happened before uh, the closure. So we'll st still continue to be doing those and those are getting paid within our established timelines. Grant accounting, the timelines and everything, we're getting dribs and drabs of, of information from MSD regarding certain grants and their timelines and whether it's an extension and whether there's a waiver and all of that. So, um, but some of those things just don't stop and we're continuing uh, with those as necessary and any deadline that we have upcoming, we will meet those um, because staff is working on those. And then again, purchasing, uh, you know, one of the things that we'll talk about in a second, you know, the legal RFP that this board has to put out. So we did that. Um, 
you know, during this uh, past couple of weeks. So that's gotten out on the street. And again, we're continuing to process purchase orders as we need to purchase things related to this. Uh, we're putting those through. And, and the accounting part, we're taking care of that so that if there is any federal or state reimbursement for some of the things that we are expending and not have planned for, uh, we're accounting for those separately. So we would be able to seek for reimbursement if that's necessary. As far as our highlights, again, the 4-3 payroll, uh, we put it together. Um, you know, we made some assumptions. We continue to pay a lot of the part time and temporary employees along with our permanent employees. Uh, vend vendors still continue to get paid on time. Um, again, like I had mentioned, um, you know, we're, we're tracking all of these expenditures um, that are directly related to COVID, whether it's a cleaning supply or additional transportation needs or things like that. And again, as I mentioned earlier too, um, legal services RFP went out uh, last Friday. So I think we have about a two week time frame for that. And then we'll work through the logistics with the board as far as uh, what we received in any questions that we may have responded to or need to respond to. And then, um, the, of course, the evaluation of the RFPs will involve the board as well. Do we have any more contracts that are coming at the end of their term? at the end of the school year, any other, other contracts? Other than the normal, like, instructional materials and right. things like that, yes. Now, we extended the, um, um, the waste management, uh, the, the dumpster um, okay. services. We've extended that because when we did the initial contract, I think it was for two years and with three one-year extensions. So we, you know, um, as long as the company could hold those prices, we would exercise that option to continue that. But as far as anything administratively, right. other than like software licenses and book licenses and things like that, nothing um, that would require an RFP is coming up. Okay, great. Thank you. Anyone else? When, when, we're, track, when we're tracking these expenses, are we also looking at where we're not saving money, but aren't spending money at this time because we're shut down. I Absolutely. Mean, so we'll have another figure at some point so we can reallocate sources maybe this summer. If we have to have different programs, we should have some fund well, balances it, other places. If we reallocate anything, it, will be before, it would have to be before June 30th because that's our fiscal year. That's what I'm saying. But yes. We um, should have a, I want to maybe update next time. So if we can update to do things for the summer, if we have to run special programs in the summer. Yeah, and, and we're working on that, but there's a lot of uh, ifs, ands, or buts with that. You know, when is school gonna go? Because that will have a determination, you know, when school will come back, if school comes back. Um, and then again, as we're going through all of these um, scenarios uh, with the distance learning, what are we gonna do to provide that? All of that impacts that projection, but mm -hmm. yes, you, you will absolutely receive that. And, and I, I know we don't know what's gonna happen. I just wanna know, we have resources, if we have extra resources, where we can allocate them. Yes. And if we have to do that by June the 30th, have a plan in place to say, if we get back to school May the 1st, June the 1st, or not at all, at least we have some ideas of what we can do and not be not be at the last minute on June the 30th making irrational decisions. Yes, sir. I had that question, that question too, in that, and, and we're, maybe you were gonna mention it when we do our, our, um, our big, transfer report, not transfer report, the one before it. Uh -huh. The expenditure report. I'm interested report. in the big picture. What kinds of things we're saving money on and what kind of things you're predicting that we're going to have to spend? So maybe you can mention it when we look at your executive. We can, as, far as, as far as the big picture, I mean, we are just, what, three weeks into this. So there's a lot of unknowns to, to, to give you that broad picture. But we had a very mild winter. So hopefully we're going to see some utility things. Obviously transportation costs because we're not transporting on a daily basis. You know, some of those offsets. But then if we're going to increase technology or provide hotspots or increase other internet access, and then there's costs that are coming in. As far as nailing down very specifics, I think we're too new into this, I'm looking but, for general. but, just but broad question. picture is yes, we're going to save on some of our administrative, not necessarily administrative, but our operational costs in transportation, perhaps operations, maybe a little bit in maintenance, um, but we're going to spend it in instruction and packets and envelopes to mail these packets out and postage and, and things like that. Transportation um, for the deliveries of the food, you know, it's uh, not much. Compared yeah. to the transportation that we spend yeah. on transporting. But keep in mind, we were projecting a couple of those categories to be over anyway. So this, again, we have to have the time to do the analysis. Hopefully that'll bring us back into all positive Those states. Closed, so we've saved money on some, a lot of that. Uh, power, uh, there's been some, mm -hmm. that's the kind of stuff I wanted to have a bigger picture, like, like Mr. Mm -hmm. Smith. Mm -hmm. So and like like not at the last minute. You're yeah. Right. No. Absolutely. And and the, and the prognosis. You know, depending on you know what we are going to hear from school closures, we should be able to have something by um, next month's board meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. I have other questions. Um, mm -hmm. On the payroll, 
Um, you put including leave and attendance modifications. What is mm -hmm. that? So with it, we're tracking because of the 10 days, you know, we're unsure whether those are gonna be waived or not. So we put in a special code so that, you know, when, because we're continuing to pay our permanent people. So we, we're coding them so we can track all of these the different types of leaves. You know, we've got extensions of FMLA, FMLA people coming back early. So there's a whole lot of changes that have happened because of this. And we're trying to track those by making modifications. Not that somebody's not entitled to leave or anything like that. It's an internal tracking so that if we have to have reporting, how many days and, and so on and so forth, that we can accurately track those. EV19, is that what you're calling it? Pretty much. <laughs> Emergency leave for one, uh, teleworking for others, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's my question. How are we working that? We're paying everybody no matter what whatever they're doing, right? Is that we're, we're, we are paying all permanent employees. Uh -huh. We have paid a lot of our regular temporary, such as our five-hour paras, and we have we will be paying those through the workday of 424. But our daily subs and some of our temporaries that come sporadically, we had not paid those past their workday of March 13th. Okay, and then come April 24th, we're going to have to furlough. They they will be furloughed. Yes. Who's furloughed? Them. What do you mean? As the furloughed, who are we furloughing at April 24th? So our um, now. There will be an option that the employee will have because there might be opportunities to continue this distance learning and support there. So the employees will have to make a decision after 424. So we're looking at some of our, our, our paras and some of those what we call long-term temporaries or substitutes. Um, not the daily substitutes. I'm thinking substitutes in non-teaching positions. Correct. Extended long-term subs because they're still supporting that distance learning will absolutely get paid um, But there will be a, there'll be a, a decision that will have to happen on 424 Do I go for unemployment with all the funds are there and the stimulus funds or do I want to continue to support the schools? Because we will have uh, work available Great. Dr. King. And what we did was we gave employees that fall into that category and they know who they are because employees that fall into that category do not are not eligible for health insurance and so they know who they are. And we gave them an option because some of them are working quite well with students supporting teachers and, and supporting students and we don't want to disrupt that. So if they're doing fine with what they're doing, they continue to get paid, they're fine. But if they're not and if it makes sense for their family to file for unemployment, then they have the option to do that and that will be effective starting April 27th so the work day after the 24th mm -hmm. okay so mm -hmm. like if so the paras don't have insurance so if they're exposed they that's at their own risk and that's the decision they're making and they are yes and, and they are home mm -hmm. oh, but what do you mean how can they, you said home? the para, paras are being five-hour paras yeah they're doing phone calls and, and they're helping out that way online Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But no one's no. leaving their home to go to anyone's There home have been some that have volunteered, some teachers, some paras that have volunteered. Some of them are out at the food sites. Some of them are helping with learning packets. So they're doing different things, not because somebody said you must, but they have volunteered to do that. Um, and, and, they're, and they're aware. They, they, are, they already know, but there are not a lot of paras that are out. I've had some bus drivers to contact me. I've had a variety of different people that want to do something right. and some of them are, are doing something and and some of them are not as far as volunteering goes but uh as if they are supporting students supporting um, teachers online or telephone they're okay okay mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. the the decision is theirs um and then uh, transitioning to July 1st you know everything's changes July 1st mm -hmm. we're not ready with the budget or anything so no that hasn't any, been finalized yet has there been any discussion about what we do how we go out from one to the other is there a thought about how how we do that I mean maybe at, at closed session we'll discuss the contracts I want to talk about teacher contracts and Okay. But so as we're going now we would transition from June 30th to July 1 just as if this was a normal year the only caveat would be if there was any changes to any funding coming, you know, but we'll, we will put, you know, everything will be in process. We, there won't be a hiccup there. Or there won't be a change in, in, in how we transition from one fiscal year to the next. Not because of this. Okay. Um, and then on the budget side, have you been thinking about it? With it, we're only getting MOE according to the commissioners. And my can question we, is, can we stick with the COVID conversation and have that one later? It's oh, no, finance and payroll. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. It's the last question. I, okay. Because I, it's I don't see it in any information that we're talking about at all about budget. Okay. So, uh, 
so what what are our are, are we looking at what we're going to do about that i'm not saying a detailed thing i'm just saying um the reductions are in there and hopefully we're thinking about what we're going to have so to do. captain kelly i have not been what you had just mentioned that has not been communicated to me as far as the maintenance of effort so until i would assume we have those discussions with the county and, and get that officially but yes we've as as when we presented this budget to you, we do have a plan going forward that if we were to get a dollar less than what we submitted, $10 less. So we are working on that. But as far as trying to draw that hard line as to these are the only dollars that we're gonna get, we're not there yet because the state hasn't even finalized those dollars. Okay, I know the commissioners submitted their budget already. I saw it in the paper and it said that they give, they're giving us MOE. So I saw that in the paper, in the Bay Times, so. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. I don't know if you guys have been informed on So just, that's the next big step, and that's a okay. lot, of, lot of work. Oh, so. absolutely, yeah. But we're prepared for it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Just to clarify, it was my understanding that everybody that had health insurance would be paid. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, we're, so we used the term- Didn't have health insurance would not be paid. There's, there's a few exceptions to that, but that would be the general rule, yes. But what are the exceptions? There's about six people who, because of the, um, we only provide health benefits to um, employees that work, I think, 79% or more, and we have some half-time teachers, so they're still a permanent position, and they do not, they're not eligible for health insurance, but those six or seven people are still considered a permanent employee. But, but as a generalization, yeah, if you have health insurance, you're gonna get, uh, continue to get paid. If you don't, that's considered temporary. Not to take time here, but there are some very unusual exceptions to that. And whether they've all been caught or not, I know um, the HR director had one specific one that came in and the answer was no, you're not being paid. But well, well, one thing I want to bring, thing, you know, if we're talking about personnel, I think that's a no, slippery it, line. It, it, I'm not mentioning a name. I'm just saying in this general category, uh, maybe we can discuss who, what, where, and how. But what I just heard, the general public will not be able to understand, except people that will be paid have health insurance, and then except for five or six unusual cases, they will not. They will continue to get paid, those five that are not eligible for health insurance. And all of these employees that are affected by this furlough have been informed. Okay. That's all. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Ms. Morrison? Yeah. No Mr. Smith? No. All right. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Mr. So Fister. Thank you. And so I believe Ms. Bass is uh, standing outside the door and she'll come right on in because Human Resources is up next. And as she comes in, just to reiterate, those folks, Human Resources has been in touch with everyone. So everybody got email and they got a letter to their home. So um, they know who they are. So thank you, Ms. Bass. We're at your slide to uh, give us some updates with regard to your department. Good evening, Dr. Kane, Mrs. Harper. All human resources staff has continued to work to make sure all major HR functions have continued without interruption. And I'm very proud of my staff, very proud of my staff. Time and attendance and assisting with payroll, we do that every other Monday and just about every day of the week. Working collaboratively with MSDE for renewals for teacher certification because some people were in the queue to be renewed this year. Completion of all retirement filings, people are still sending in paperwork, they arrive each day and Teresa will pick them up periodically, but we can do it electronically. Uh, we're continuing with VOEs. Many people have decided to refinance their homes and other automobiles that they have during this time of low percentages for loans. Verification of employment. Oh, thank yeah, you. Oh, VOEs, I'm sorry, uh, Captain Kelly. Uh, uh, highlights include virtual interviews. Just about all of the schools have set up either through Blackboard or Skype. We tend to stay away 
away from Zoom, but we are virtually interviewing, and so are principals. Uh, furlough notices have been mailed both ways, email and U.S. Postal Services. Should have been postmarked Monday, and I'm sure they got it today, but I did not have any calls after the notices went out. Implementation of the voluntary process has been put in place. Those people interested in moving next year, it will be due to us by May 1st. Principal interviews and assistant principal interviews are tentatively scheduled via something virtual uh, the 15th, 16th, and 17th. We have quite a few candidates that need to be interviewed. And continuity of FMLA and processing and giving directions um, for unemployment. We don't do it, but we do answer questions if we know and if they're eligible. Well, you'll be processing the, I mean, you'll be sending in the reports to Maryland Unemployment for the, anyone who has claims? Actually, we have a third party that does that, Equifax, oh. and they do the, uh, between Teresa and our office, they will get everything to unemployment, yes. Oh, so it's done that in finance, not through your office? Well, it is done through my office, but Teresa works with Equifax. Okay, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Is that a contract we have with Equifax? Um, it was here before me, Captain Kelly, so I imagine it is. However, I have not signed off on any contract going forward. Okay. Yeah, could we look at that? I mean, do we? I can get that for you. I'm sure Mr. Fista has it. Instead of having a third party do it, you know, somebody in house taking care of it. You said there are interviews and in, for principals and vice principals. Yes, we do that every spring. Okay, for any new positions? For, okay. Not new, existing. Oh, okay. We do have uh, a principal that is retiring. Yes. Now. Yes. Yeah. And do you have a list of those candidates? Now? I certainly do, and I have their certifications along, and Mr. Pista, Mr. Um, Paluski has the rubric, noting what each and every person has done and all of the experiences. Oh, great. Okay, that'd be great to see. Good luck to everybody. That's awesome. Anyone have any questions? The implementation of voluntary transfer process it's just that's when they come to you and say they want to transfer somewhere, or they want to transfer in-house somewhere, or? They transfer to another local school location, yes. And they send in that by written notification. That way principals know if somebody's interested in moving based on their location, destination where they live, somewhere closer to, um, that, that makes it easier for them to uh, get to school each morning on time. Yeah, right. no, that's good, okay, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Smith. Smith. I, I understand you're doing unemployment insurance, it's probably a you know, maybe not everything we should be doing, but I would really like to help anybody we can that's not getting a paycheck that work for us to help them navigate through these times to give them as much support as we can because, you know, we want them back when we get back up to full speed. And I think it'd be a very goodwill employment thing to do to really help them any way you can with maybe your staff, you or whoever, or just refer them to somebody that has some expertise so they can get through these times because some people have tough time, have never done this before. I wouldn't know how to go to unemployment. So I just think it's not helping easy. them, even though they're being furloughed, just do as much as we can for them. It's not a problem. I am here most days and answer the phone most days. So that link that's underlined takes them through step by step. It's very elementary, much easier than I remembered, but I'll be glad to help anyone that calls in. Well, I have a lot of my staff that are not, well, the most that I had to uh, lay off during this time and the phone, you know, they don't answer the phone and getting through on even online is mm -hmm. it's it shut down one day last week I had two of them call me and I was like just keep trying just yeah I think they've gone to certain days that people can call in based on their so last name last name mm -hmm. yes the so. optimum time is right in the middle of the night <laughs> but nobody else is on it but nobody else is on it <laughs> other questions Mr. Smith well, I just I just want to reiterate it just just help them any way we can because it's one thing losing a paycheck, but you know, we all these people, we want to come back. I mean, we want to get back and running as soon as we can, and we want them to know that even though some things we can't do right now, we want to help them any way we can. And I think a little goodwill will go along. And way. we've given that guidance, and we've also let them know that they are certainly invited back. Right. Mm -hmm. Mr. Morissette, any questions? Mr. Anderson? Okay. We are going into closed session after the end of this part of the meeting, so we will be doing the HR report at that time. No that, problem. Okay, great. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Bass. And then we'll have Mr. Um, Pender to come in, and he is on cue. Welcome, Mr. Pender. <coughs> Mr. Pender, you are live on TV. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Good evening, President Harper, Dr. Kane, board members. My name is Sid Pender, Chief Operating Officer for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. 
And what I would like to discuss um, and go over is our meal distribution sites that we have set up. Um, and <clears throat> we started out with three sites um, 18 days ago, and they were Graysonville Elementary School, Sellersville Middle School, and Queen Anne's County High School. On day one, we served only 176 students. As of today, we have served 7,000 students. Um, so we have really increased that amount of people uh, by getting the word out. We've done social media, we've done um, calls, but I will say the one area that we really focused on was, as I call them, the, um, the mayor, uh, the unofficial mayor of the town. Mm -hmm. So contacting them, we had um, at uh, Pinckney Park one day, we only had three people show up. And I kind of know the lady there that's the unofficial mayor, called her up and said, hey, can you make some phone calls for me? Next thing you know, we had 18 kids show up in about 15 minutes. Um, this, this program has not been easy. Uh, we operate under the Maryland State Department of Education's um, Summer Food Service Program. There is a tremendous amount of regulations and red tape that is associated with the program. And I will say Margaret Ellen Kalvinovich, who is our supervisor of transportation and food service, has really done an, an excellent job of coordinating, coordinating this along with beating down MSDE to get them to change some of the regulations. Um, and, I, and I'll go through, the, through those in a few minutes. Also, uh, Julie Hickey, who is the regional Sodexo manager, um, pretty much lives here. Um, and is, is dedicated to making sure this program works. Um, so again, we started out with three sites. We are now up to 13 sites. Um, and you may wonder, well, how did you pick those sites? When it first started out, MSDE uh, produces a map and you have to stay within the boundaries of where 50% um, poverty uh, farm students are. Well, as you can imagine, that's mainly up north. Um, Sellersville Middle School qualified. Um, Ms. Kalvinovich was able to uh, look at the language and get Queen Anne's County High School involved in that because those students that are coming from Sellersville Middle School are also going to uh, Queen Anne's County High School. So she was able to get that one going along with Graysonville Elementary School. So the 13 sites started out with areas that we knew, hey, travel's gonna be a little bit of a problem. Can we get the buses to take the, the meals there to those sites? So right now we have um, three buses delivering uh, to those sites. We also have a bus or two, depending on their availability from County Ride that is helping us out with that um, tremendously and offering us some support. With that being said, we looked at the areas, tried to kept, keep it within like a five minute drive. One of the problems we ran into, the state was requiring us to make sure that the student was present every time they came up. And as you can imagine, we did not have any sites on Ken Island. Um, and we know there's a need there, but MSDE was not allowing us to open up those sites. So parents, on their break would have to load up the children and haul them to Graysonville or one of the other sites to get the meals. We have since uh, made a lot of progress with that. They do not have to be present to get the meals. You have to give the student's name so we can keep a record of that. That was um, probably one of our biggest accomplishments getting MSD to waive that. Um, with that being said, um, we're averaging about 525 students in weekly, about 2,625. We were able, as you know, and Captain Kelly is one of our volunteers, to um, open up a site at Bayside Elementary and also Mattapeak Elementary. Um, and again, I owe that to, to Margaret Ellen for really uh, pushing the issue to get that to, to occur. Um, looking at that, <clears throat> Once you get past all the guidelines that MSDE and USDA put out, we try to focus on um, sustaining the program because we don't know how long this is going to be. So we obviously know, you know, it was going to be at least four weeks. We are preparing for a much longer duration, you know, as you can imagine. So one of the issues we're running into, um, what happens if somebody get sick, what happens, we have had some people that are very nervous about coming out and helping or working. Um, we were serving meals uh, five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at the 13 sites. 
starting next Tuesday, we will be serving meals on Tuesdays and Fridays, but they will be still getting the same amount of meals. We just know that we're in this for the long haul. Um, so we're preparing when you get meals on Tuesday, you'll get meals for that day and Wednesday and Thursday. <coughs> Friday, you will get meals for Friday and then also on Monday and then Tuesday morning for breakfast. Um, this way we can prepare the meals on say Monday, get them all in their locations they need to be. And then we can also do the same thing on Thursday uh, to accommodate that. Again, I just want to reiterate, it will be the, still the same amount of meals that we will be serving. There, it is not just narrowed down to those two days. Um, I would like to give um, congratulations to the, the backpack program uh, with Miss Amanda Enzer is running. And they do that throughout the school year. But as you can imagine with the economy and uh, people being laid off, the, that need has increased. Um, and we offer the backpack program on Fridays at the 13 locations. Um, and again, those are all volunteers putting that together so the students have meals for, for the weekend. Um, that's really been a, a major undertaking and uh, I wanna say thank you to the volunteers for, for taking care of that. Um, are there any questions about the food service portion or the meal distribution sites? Just one. Yes, sir. Uh, the food is the same quantity. Yes, sir. But it's only being distributed on two days. Are the packets separated with the, this is for Monday, yes. this is for Tuesday. They'll be, I mean, that seems kind of elementary, but. Yes. And we, we also sent a letter out in English and Spanish informing them of that, but it will be broken down into that okay. process. It seems elementary, but yeah. better be safe than sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to say it is, it's a, She's done a fabulous job. And I'm amazed at how many times she stops over and says how are our locations, even on Ken Island. Um, it has changed a lot. So I did notice in the Bay Times today, they're still saying that you have to have a student there to pick it up. So there's some things we, we need to fix on the advertisements. Yes, right, so we have all of our advertisements out, but because of the way the right, media reports they could have written that story three days ago, and since then, we've changed. So their next reporting, yes. they should be caught up. Okay, so we can let them know that. Also, that um, it's ages 2 to 18. So mm -hmm. we're giving it, there's a few that have four and five, four, three-year and four-year-olds, and we're still giving them food, so that should That's be correct. Good. We write it down. Um, and then I've also gotten some 18-year-olds that they're already out of school, but, but and, and it, it's really hard for them to even admit they need it because it's a little bit of an embarrassment for people to pick up the food, but they're starting to get used to it. Mm -hmm. um, we also are trying to, from the sites, advertise that it exists. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, people didn't know it was coming to Bayside. We had several Hispanics come in that yep. said, we were getting into Graysonville, but I live right around, you know, right around the corner. This is awesome. So I said, we'll start passing it to your mm -hmm. friends, and then we. I contacted um, our church that has a mm, Hispanic yep. group and said, please notify them this is available on Ken Island now. So we just have to, on our own, advertise. And, and they're trying to do that, some of the... Um, and the letter that's going to be passed out to the um, parents or guardians that are picking up uh, the meals this Friday okay. has on there that, you know, the student does not have to be present. Right. Um, things as we all know, just changed day to day in MSDE trying to get caught up with the regulations. But we have put that out there. Um, and as you said, it's by word of mouth is how we're going to get, you know, the people to come out. Um, they're not sitting there watching, you know, reading Facebook or on the internet. Um, the people that truly need it um, might, may not have those. Right. And I would like to say, uh, I've attended probably about 10 out of the 13 sites. And to watch the students come up there and, and get something to eat. I mean, you know, they're excited about it. Um, and like you said, there are some that, hey, I don't really want to go up there. And you know, after a while, they came up, and it's it's regular, it's routine now. I mean, they know who the volunteers are. We try to keep the same people at each school, so they kind of develop that bond um, and know who they are. It also helps speed the process up. But um, I have it, got one of your um, Esau tutors. That's not. Not getting, not going to be getting paid, and she's advertising to the students that she has that she stays in contact with. So mm -hmm. they're they're trying to to spread the word, and that's yeah. that's really helpful. Appreciate.
her efforts in opening this up so all the kids get food if they need it. That's we, awesome. The summer program we run is very minimal. You know, the true summer program. This was a major undertaking of making sure we had all the coolers, all the safety precautions and everything taken care of. And also we had the food, you know, available for it. So Sid, when this sir. is all said and done, the thing that most people remember is what you and the superintendent and all those people that volunteered have done to feed the kids. Okay. That will be the thing they remember. Um, all the behind the scenes that was done, uh, that will be the thing that will be remembered. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I'm very proud to be a part of it. And I think, like I said, Margaret oh, Allen and, and Julie and him have done great. And, um, we have truly gone to every store we can to get the coolers, to get all kinds of, the, you know, product for them to make sure that it flows in a smooth transition. So, um, and she even brought out her own personal coolers. Oh yeah. Yeah. I brought in 10. <laughs> That's yeah. It's we, like I said, we, yeah. So can I ask a question real quick? I thought I saw in the County commissioners meeting last week that the County ride was stopping their assistance because of the because of the issue of porting, um, transporting food. No, actually, they uh, were assisting uh, with two um, buses, and now they're down to one bus based upon need. But they had some um, transporting some other individuals that needed to be transported. But the I will the actually the good part about the county ride, they're certified in all the meal safety because they're delivering the meals to the elderly. So that worked out great. Okay, good. Um, you know, and Margaret Allen was really uh, impressed with the process they had there. So um, whenever they can, they assist. Some days they have a little bit higher uh, need to be transporting, um, you know, individuals around the county. So, um, great. Building checks, just real quick. We are still monitoring the buildings every day. Um, you know, we still have emergency issues that pop up. We have some skeleton crews that are out there um, working on, you know, if we have a leak that we've identified, we still have the boilers to take care of. So, without going into everything, I mean, the day-to-day -day operations still occur. You about know. sanitizing our schools? Are they we have about, I'd say, a quarter of them done. It won't take that long to do it. They are unoccupied, so the virus is already dead in, the, in there. Okay. But we have four of them that are totally done. When I say done, I'm talking about from top to bottom. Okay. Um, I don't advise on having the custodians go back in there, you know, and recontaminating the area. Um, I think they're better left alone until we get it permanent date of going back and then reevaluate the situation. The more people that go in, the more chance you know, of contamination you know, issues we're going to have. And our, our population of workers uh, in maintenance and also in custodians are, you know, above 60 years old. I mean, they're in that age bracket of, you know, catching that. So um, I, I do worry about them. Back, back to the you. food thing. This is being funded by the uh, USDA, right? Yes, yeah, sir. What's going to happen? And I know you don't know this yet. When this ceases, because during the summer normally we don't do this kind of food service, and doing uh, different times, holidays we don't do this type of service. Mm -hmm. And it, I'm not saying it's not a thing that's being done now to help everybody, but this might not be something that goes on forever. And no, when it stops. It's because the government's going to stop funding it, correctly? Yes, it will fall into the, the government's going to give you an issue depending on when, if school, when school opens up. Um, basically, the summer food portion is operated in the summer schools. Um, so when Margaret Allen applies, she has to fill out all this paperwork and then that site is approved and then they calculate all of that information like you're talking about. But at some point they're going to have to say, hey, you know, here's our cutoff date or we're going back to like normal operations when is that i don't know you know um, but that will be that's not our call that will be a government call yes yep that's correct well maybe not ours i mean we do have a county commission and they do have money yeah but i mean we're not going to keep i don't know how to say this correctly we're not going to keep feeding people forever i mean it's going to be toned that, yeah. down and it's, it's just when it comes there yeah yeah I think there's a sensitivity of feeding these children on the county commission. I don't think they'll say no if, if the result uh, is not an enormous amount. I wouldn't be ashamed to have us ask for it if it came to that. 
we're educators. Uh, Maybe the county could do a food service if they think it's a good idea. You don't they probably know have to hire ask. another position too. That's the key. Because Margaret Ellen's got I mean, a full time job too that she's trying to do at the same time, right? It's we've that would be the diff difficult part. We, we, yeah, but as might, all of us have, require that. it's been a lot of hours. <laughs> Understand. I mean, doing a doing a great job. I, yeah, I, I think definitely. it's great, but you know there is going to be a, you know, things are changing, but we don't know when. But we, we hopefully we'll get back to normal. Do you have any? The only question I had is from day to day. If you expect numbers to expand because of word of mouth, are you prepared for that? Yes, we have purchased um, enough product, and we've also purchased enough coolers for transportation. Um, we have substitutes lined up um, in case somebody becomes ill. Um, or we can just add, simply add them to um, the routes. Uh, like I said, we went to the Tuesdays and Fridays because this is going to be a long-term mm -hmm. investment. Um, I can tell you some of the people Monday through Friday, you know, they're getting they're getting burned out. Um, you know, making uh, 2,000 meals a day is at four sites. That's 19 people making that. I mean, it's you know. So I do see some fatigue with those individuals, and I do see some, you know, frustrations. Um, so I think that with going to the Tuesdays and Fridays will help out. But yes, we we have uh, a plan in place if it does dramatically increase. So have you seen any of the sites now where you've run out and had to send them to a different site, or so had to come back and get supplies? That <laughs> that that's a good question. That's the hardest part, um, and I'm estimating coming. is estimating because I can tell you weather is a factor. Um, the day of the week appears to be a factor um, with what, how many students are going to come out. So what we have set up, we have basically runners that are going from site to site and they call and go, hey, we're down to four. You know, we're going to need more. So that one runner, say John Murdoch, he's in the bus, he's traveling to Sellersville Middle School to grab 20 more to bring up there. Because some days, I've seen the counts, some days it's 171 at a place. And the next day, it's at 90. You know, I mean, it's, I've seen those fluctuations, and the last thing you want to do is run out of food and not have enough made, or you have too much made and it just goes to waste. Um, but we, we do have runners going between there. And that have was. Have you seen that though, Sid? Have you seen food that hasn't been used? At first, with the regulations that we have, that MSD has in place, yes. Um, but I will say it has dwindled because we kind of know the numbers, but it's still, it's, it's still not an exact science. Um, and that, when you have the backpack program, we try to average out what those counts are. Um, and like I said, you, you may see a 30, 40 person drop one day. And if um, it rains, that's a factor. You know, we have tents set up, you know, if it rains. Um, I will say a great idea Morgan Ellen had also was using our school buses to transport it because we did have some people that were afraid uh, when they saw just a van sitting up there. Hey, what's the van for? Um, the big yellow bus up there has been a great uh, asset and great advertisement. You right. don't want a police car to show up. No. no. They, no. they do not show up. No. So. But the buses help. Yep. Any other comments on? Uh, you have one here, bus contractor pay. So uh, the bus contractor pay, uh, at some point we need to discuss um, not our county drivers, but we need to discuss the contract, uh, contracted drivers with the four Close. LLCs. Close. Can we attend to that in the closed session? Is that yep. all right? Okay. I would highly recommend that. Yep. Okay, great. Right, thank you. I'm sorry, anyone else? Any other yes, sir. questions? Okay, great. Do so we have any major construction projects occurring right now? We, at uh, Ken Island High School, we have the fire alarm installation, um, and we also have the EMS installation, which is still ongoing. That's ongoing and not yes. a problem. Is this the time if some of these people, employers, have people that need to work and don't have work that we can get a better deal uh, and have them work for us? Those, Carla and myself and Jim O'Donnell have been looking at that because it is a good time for that. Yeah. Um, it, it really is. Yeah. I noticed that they're almost giving away roofing, for mm -hmm. instance. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It might be something if somebody has the time. 
and we've that we can save some money in the past three weeks we've had roofing not major roofing projects but we've identified areas that we were having problems with leaks and have been able to fix those where when school was in session we couldn't have um, the, the workers are on top of the roof so it works out great for us we have been able to do if you ride by Queens County High School paint the doors do exterior projects like that that you know to try to maintain everything because I don't know what the summertime is gonna look like right. for us so if there's anything on our punch list that could be done now, that would be great. That's what we're trying to knock out. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And with, just, with, with, also with, with being safe, too. Yes. Uh, if we have some employees that don't feel comfortable being out in this time, mm -hmm. we can totally understand mm -hmm. that, that's you know, correct. Their, their trepidation and, and don't want to force them into doing it. I mean, I mean if they want to, I, I mean, that's great. But I don't want anybody to feel like they're being forced to go out in these very difficult times and we have the protocols put in place when they enter the building of temperature and you know if they had any signs um, we do require our contractors that are working at Kennelan High School to wear masks and gloves while they're in the building um, but some of those projects still have to occur you know right now um, so we're getting a pretty good deal with that I was looking at the capital budget and depending on action with the county commissioners, there's some work that could be done uh, starting July 1st. Mm -hmm. Or maybe earlier, I don't I probably not, but. <sighs> so probably the next board meeting that we have, I'll be bringing some contracts to get uh, approved okay. so that when school does get out, we're already lined up with the, those contracts approved because if we don't do that in May, the contractors are going to find other jobs to go to and line those up, and right. we're going to be on the end Time of is of the essence. Yep. All right. Thank you, Mr. Yep. Pender. Thanks. And Appreciate just before you leave, Mr. Pender, just want to acknowledge uh, Julie Hickey and Margaret Ellen. Uh, Ms. Kay and also Mr. Pender. We recognize Ms. Kay and uh, Ms. Hickey with the COVID-19 alerting and um, readiness group, our CART group, because of the work that they do around the food service. And, and Mr. Pender is a part of that. So thank you to all. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, thanks. And next we're gonna talk to you about our continuity of learning plan. And Mr. P is gonna lead us off on that. Good evening. For the record, my name is Greg Paluski, Deputy Superintendent, and I am uh, honored to be before you on behalf of the superintendent and the executive team uh, to share with you our continuity of learning plan. Um, and before I do that, to go over our local response and really our three action items, uh, I think it goes without saying this is one of the most significant changes in American education in about a 24 hour period. Um, and, and what you're gonna see is a lot of work that's been done by a lot of people. Um, so let's get right to it. There are three phases to our plan. The first is uh, to plan and organize, and I'm gonna go through that with you, what we've done since we were notified on March the 12th. Then I'm gonna talk about our implementation and support phase, which is what we're in right now. And then I'll uh, finalize that with our phase three, which is our evaluation and adjustment as we all wait and possibly continue uh, thinking about an extended school closure beyond April 24th, uh, and then with a recent report today even suggested by the state superintendent to potentially start planning for a fall um, online learning, distance learning um, uh, situation depending upon um, the state of things in Maryland. So first of all, let's talk about what happened and what we've done in, in phase one to really begin to start on April the 1st. So as we were notified on uh, March uh, 12th at around four o'clock PM and the governors and the state superintendent had mentioned that schools would be closed for a two week period of time. Uh, we immediately began working with our school principals and spe specifically our teachers that literally had a very short amount of time on the 13th of March, uh, which was our last day that teachers were actually physically face-to-face -face with students. Uh, we want to thank our teachers for that because they had pushed out a variety of materials to send home with students uh, on March the 13th. We've also, uh, we indicated to make sure that students took their devices home uh, within grades five to 12, and I'm gonna talk about three and four as we move forward. Uh, so that was the initial push, and there was a lot of information, a lot of materials uh, that went out um, to parents and students uh, on that particular day, and, and that had served us well. 
uh, over the next two week period. Uh, the expectation from Dr. Kane for teachers during that two week period was that there was no expectation for online teaching and there was no expectation that anything should be graded during that two week period. So our focus was on continuity of learning uh, and support of that to make sure that students were still progressing uh, in their learning where they were on March 13th to continue to be able to do that. We pushed out a variety of resources from the Division of Curriculum Instruction, uh, from the Maryland uh, State Department of Education. And then in that time, and I'm gonna show you as part of our survey results, uh, the overwhelming response by our teachers in that two week period to keep students uh, moving forward. We did a large assessment uh, within the Division of Curriculum Instruction to assess what tools uh, and resources that our teachers had um, to make sure that if we were going to extend this over a long period of time, that we were ready for that. Um, and overwhelmingly, our teachers have a variety of curriculum resources, and I'll share a little bit of that. One thing that did come up out of this was a concern around career and technology education, because as you know, uh, that is a combination of not only content, but there's a huge lab component a physical uh, working with machinery in the lab component. And I'll talk about that a little bit later uh, in regards to CTE. Um, we've made some progress in that area. And the other area was in, simply in, in the performing uh, arts area. Um, and so, and, and I'll talk about that a little bit later because since the beginning of our planning, there has been a lot of resources uh, from the Maryland State Department of Education as it relates to the performing arts. Uh, finally, part of that first phase in planning was uh, a survey, which I'm going to share those results with you, uh, that was sent out to our parents and our students. And we also sent one out to our teachers to be able to assess not only uh, where they were in their process of connecting with students, but also really what we're after here is their connectivity, um, their internet uh, access at home as well. And I'll share those results with you. During uh, phase one of that planning process, uh, we'd also met with our administrators uh, on a variety of, of times, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, and just to note to that, we probably have met with them virtually, I would say, Dr. Kane, anywhere between two or three times in a week, uh, checking their progress, checking out where their teachers are, uh, and so forth. And that has been a great feedback loop as we've moved forward. Let me share with you very highlighted some of the survey results that we got back uh, from our parents and our students, uh, really that started at the beginning of the first week that we were out um, during the initial first phase of school closure. Uh, we had over seven, uh, 700, we had 752 responses self-reported. There were five questions. Um, if there was a family member that had multiple uh, children in our school system, we simply just wanted one for that particular household. So some of these might have multiple students, but you can see um, uh, we had overwhelmingly, at least all of our, uh, some of our parents in all of our schools at least responded to this. So I think that was, uh, uh, that was very positive that we had, not all, of course, but we had um, a very good response at 752. So this question was about internet service that's currently available at your home. So you could see how that 752, that almost nearly 95% of those that responded said that they did have internet service at home uh, with around a little over 5%, about 40, nearly 40 households that said that they did not. Now, interestingly enough, it's not only being inter having internet access, but it's also about the reliability. So you can see as these results change slightly, uh, um, uh, that about almost like 80% now uh, of that survey results uh, saying that their internet, they did have access, but it was reliable, whereas we got into just around 21%. Um, so we know there's there's some spottiness, uh, certainly within our, our county and our jurisdiction. We're gonna talk about some of the things that we're gonna support families with that. And as just before you get, pardon me one moment, yes, to the next slide, this survey was accessible by mobile phone. Um, but if you looked at the first, graph, you'll see some of the more northern schools um, had the lower responses. Thank you. Thank question. you for pointing that out, Dr. Kane. Yes, Still, Captain Kelly. I didn't quite understand what the purpose of the survey was. I, I, you generally said, you know, what school do you go to and do you have internet? But I, my question is, I mean, what, what I think we lost, personally, I think we lost a couple of weeks by doing that. Because just the the second thing is probably your fa your next phase, the high school, the individual school, sent a note out to the school and said, "Do you have internet?" 
Is it working? If not, call this number and we will talk to you. So in that respect, I think it's more valuable information to have received exactly where the, the problem was in the internet. Is it Bark and Barclay? Is it, you know, instead of, do you have it? I mean, we know we're missing, some places are missing it, but I don't know what the purpose of that was. I'm not sure what you gained from that. And maybe you can well, fill me in. Well, one, Captain Kelly, is uh, we're trying to, triangulate as much data as we can. So looking at from a systemic standpoint, but also looking at, at an individual standpoint as well of our individual schools. So we also get that feedback from our individual principals when we talk about connectivity or issues that they're having. They feel the number of students that they have in their individual school. So it's simply just another piece of data for us to be able to try to pinpoint what is the large capacity of the need in order to target resources to families as quick as we can. And I'm going to show you with some of those resources that we've been pushing out and in some really real world examples where um, we had some parents just not too long ago, within a week ago, at, they didn't have internet access. Um, and they asked what resources were, were available beyond you know whatever communication that they had. And I'll show you the Atlantic Broadband. Uh, within 24 hours, that parent had internet access. Great, um, but I'm just saying, I think we wasted time on this, in, in all honesty, because we have a general idea that majority of people on Ken Island have access. And majority of people, there's, I think, 30%. We knew the number was 30% or something up in the Sellersville sure. area. So just, just for, for future, I don't care if we have this data. I think better would be the specific location, the specific neighborhood we have problems in, so that then you can do what looks like you're doing already, was getting this access. So just sure, and, and I think it's important to, and we know that in the northern part that that is the most targeted area, but we also have families that are on Ken Island that don't have access so as well. So we should have known so, who they were instead of just so some blank... I, and, and with all due respect, Captain Kelly, it's, uh, th this didn't take us a long time to put together and it didn't take us a long time to put out to families. Okay. Um, but I think the bigger picture here is triangulating a lot of different data points. It's just one data point that we're looking at. Do those responders, were they given a laptop and we didn't know whether they could hook up at home? Uh, we are one-to-one -one from grades 3 to 12. Right. So some of the students have laptops that they can't use at home, That's obviously, true. if we, mm -hmm, if we're in the some of the northern sections. But to, to respond to Captain Kelly, we also received emails from families in Centerville and different places that mm -hmm. said, I have internet, but when you do get things going, can you please be easy on the research because my ability to download is an issue or my internet is spotty or I don't have data. So we got a lot of feedback from families. I think that was valuable and sure. helped to point us in a direction, at least give us some idea of the numbers of uh, of devices that Mr. P is going to talk about a little bit later that we may need in order to support families. So I thought that the survey was great and, and I got so, a lot of good responses back uh, for it and, and I'm, I'm grateful that those parents did respond. I think a, a, a survey like this next one that came in, specifically what do you have and don't have? I think that's much more valuable to put together of where the gaps are, just where we're going to spend this $12,000 and stuff. And moving that. forward, just because of what was sent out today with the possibility for next semester maybe having distance learning, if we know ahead of time, if we start the school year off with this survey, because we'll have new students coming in and we'll have students leaving, somebody may have the wherewithal to buy internet, you know, we should, maybe that would be a possibility of sending that out as soon as school starts. So, and, and we'll have some information Already now. Already started. Right, a so we'll be ahead. Survey. We'll be ahead. Not, not this survey, but a much more detailed survey to get real information. That would be a great idea. You mean if they have data, if they have if spotty they have data. data. Who they are, right. their address, who they are. That's, that's what it is. This was, nobody's names were here. So you had no idea where the gap was. It's just a, it's a gap. That's my, that's my only worry. That may and also so, be. And that's the start. That's, the, that's where you have to start. So you have to think about that too, was the right thing. Where we have to finish. We may not know. We may it's not different. be. It's right. different. It's different. We may not. We, we also want to protect the privacy of, of, exactly. of our families exactly. at, at exactly. the same time of trying to get 
and not get too much personalized information, but still getting to know where there's a particular need um, and better understanding. So simply, uh, this slide is just to provide uh, the public with a variety of different options that are out there that we've been pushing. Um, certainly the first one is the cabling, and that has been probably the one that's been mostly uh, widely advertised here in Queen Anne's County, that Atlantic Broadband, and, and many of these providers are offering free internet access for 30 days, 60 days, limited different amounts of plans. And I'm not gonna spend you know, you know, the time going through each one of these, but there there are different options for families. Um, now the wireless broadband, the second one, which is more of a satellite, um, obviously families that live in more rural areas, that may be an option. Um, probably one of the most is that we found that, that with families that have their cell phones, that we all know that we can use the tethering, we can use that as a mobile hotspot, uh, although that does chew up data. So there's a variety of plans that are here um, that are offered to families and we just wanna continue um, to make sure that those are available. So in the short term, uh, we've recently ordered uh, over 100 mobile hotspot devices um, that we will support um, our individual families that are in the most need. Um, and you also see in some teacher survey that we have some employees that do not have internet access, specifically teachers. So we wanna be able to support um, them as well. That estimated cost is around just over $12,000 um, for those devices in a two month data plan. The second thing is we've been looking at is operationalizing as many school districts have done um, is looking at be able to go to the individual community school and to be able to get access. Um, we've tested that at some of our schools. It's not as, as strong of a signal as we would like. So we will be phasing in at each one of our buildings, uh, starting with um, uh, our northern area first, Church Hill, Southersville, Southersville Middle School, and then Graysonville uh, Elementary School, which are also our Title I schools um, that will be providing the outdoor wireless access kit. So families will be able to go to that parking lot, be able to access the internet um, through our secured server and to be able to potentially download, submit assignments, those kinds of things. Um, we didn't list it here, but we're also looking in as many districts are, and that is the capability for even further remote areas uh, of potentially the possibility of adding some uh, Wi-Fi on buses. Uh, some jurisdictions across the country are doing that and they're doing them in very, very rural parts, even though we know the northern part um, is, is most rural to us, but a community like Crumpton, as an example, uh, might be where we could put a, a bus uh, at the fire hall, as an example, rather than that family having to drive to Southersville. So those are some of the things that we have uh, in the immediate um, that we'll continue to provide an update to you uh, as we move forward. I have another question. Yes, Captain Kelly. The mobile hotspots, 100 of these devices. Now, how are you determining mm -hmm. who gets them? I mean, sure. the reason I'm, I'm passionate about this in particular, there's some ESOL kids that are high schoolers from Queen Anne's County, and they live in Berkeley, and they, are, they have missed education for three weeks. And the concern that I'm hearing from ESOL tutors is that they're gonna quit school, they're done, if they don't keep going. So have you got information that says I need to get mobile hotspots in this spot I need to get at that spot that spot you know because you got a hundred of them I just how are you figuring out and, where they go that's the and, and we're probably gonna need more uh, that is our first this is our first that's shot cheap, I think for it, it is. It is. Uh, we, so first of all, I, I have not heard that from any of our EL teachers or our EL supervisor uh, who I meet with on a, on a regular basis. So thank you for that because I have not heard that. Okay. Nobody has shared that concern with us uh, that any of our ESAW uh, students are significantly behind, that they don't have. Uh, I realize there might be an access issue, um, but I have not heard anything that our EL students have not received a learning packet or any kind they of learning, learning materials. Packet. But they speak Spanish and that, that's what they got. And they got it just recently because it was mailed to them, which is great. They got the packet. I'm just saying, I think 
Yeah. Sure. I just recommended we emphasize. Sure, and, and, and we do. We have a strategic, certainly the northern part of our county, and I'll, I'll keep speaking about that. Uh, we know that's one of our significant areas uh, of our jurisdiction um, that needs the most support and probably has the most students that don't have access. So that will be our first point. We're already working with those principals to be able to identify um, those families. And then as soon as those are in, we'll start to uh, operationalize those 100. Um, and then and we'll continue into the next phase. Um, so we wanna do that as fast as possible so that in the event that we have to extend even further, even in the beginning of the next school year, um, that we're ready. Um, and that all of our students, uh, to the best of our ability, have access. And that is, um, you know, to be able to access a variety of different tools, uh, curricular-wise, certainly. I agree. Um, I agree. To be able to, to support them. So I can assure you that uh, we don't sleep at night because of that. Can I ask you one question on these mobile yes, hotspots? They're for individual families, individual homes or something? Yes, sir. I mean, this is going to be something that as you, everybody could use one and everybody has one done that. I mean, a lot of people are paying down their own pockets and maybe some people can't afford it and some people don't have access to it. I'm all for the schools. I said, that sounds good. But when we start giving out individual spots, you or whoever's making these decisions, who gets them and who doesn't, I mean, you're looking at me $60 a month for each one of these things. And if this is sure. contained for a long time, okay, a hundred. 200, 500, 1,000. Do we do, we do 8,000 for our whole students? I mean, it's just, I just, sure. temporarily, I, I, I like the idea. Get everybody up to speed, but at sure. some point, there's got to be some social responsibility where it could be, it might be a little bit inconvenient, but I don't know anybody that doesn't have a phone. Sure. Well, you know, and, and as our data indicated that a lot of our families do and would not need um, a, a hotspot. And, and our priority is to get these devices, get these hotspots to our families that are in most need. Uh, often it's with families that are economically disadvantaged uh, that do not have the resources. Um, that is our primary um, responsibility with these devices um, to be able to get those to those families as, as fast as we can. I, so I don't see, in my professional opinion, that we would need to purchase you know, 8,000 of these for every single individual. Um, we will learn a lot with these 100, um, getting them to our families that are, at, that are at our most need. And then we have to recall also that it's not always just that I have a mobile phone, but it's the data. It's the data it's plan. The download. Well, yeah. I understand, but what I'm saying is people have to make some social decisions. Maybe they don't need a phone, they better have internet, one of the two. And I'm not saying that's what to do. Everybody's got their own decision to make, but I'm all for a couple months seeing how this goes, but how far this keep, you know, we're signing a two, two month contract with these and then they're off the books. Well, well, it depends on how long this goes. Correct. We don't we don't know what's going to happen here. We don't know if we're going to have to use some data for a recovery plan over the summer before we even get to the fall. So there's so much that we just don't know. But what we do know is that we have a responsibility to ensure that there is equitable access for all of our students. And so we start there. And if we're paying for it for two months so that our high school kids and, and elementary and middle, for that matter, are able to access their lessons online. I don't know if somebody's going to say to us one day, you may no longer send paper packets to families. I, I don't know. We've already been told that we may not be able to get them back. So it just depends. So we have to do as much as we can to ensure that families have access to the internet to the best of our ability. So how long that lasts, I don't know. But it's got to be equitable. And, and you know, it's it, it just, I, when we start, I just, it just bothers when we start these things schools the buses i think is a good idea if we had 10 buses all around and you came you you had certain locations barclay crumpton whatever but you know when you put them in single family homes for unlimited, unlimited data i just you know we're just opening up we need to do it for a short period of time but also i, a liability I really issue want this too. gets back to us for long term it's a liability issue if these things don't work then we have to go in and get them and get and fix them. I mean, it, well, there's, you know, it's like, it's like the joke you hear on the internet, you know, the, the kid missed a bus, so it couldn't come to breakfast yesterday at the house, you know, so there's always gonna be a reason not to, you know, do something. May I ask? Yes, yes ma'am. I don't know if it'll happen this year, but for longevity, has anybody been in contact with Chop Tank with the passing of legislation about their internet service, which is primarily Northern part of our county? 
Has there been any communication with them when they'll be off the ground? No. I have no. No, we, I, I don't have an answer for that. We haven't been given an answer for that. I know that they're still out there chugging away. I got an email last night from someone who is on an advisory um, for broadband, you know, in our, in our county. Um, so I don't know that anything has happened. We've not gotten any communication. Okay. I'll put it that way. Are the commissioners involved in something like that? I read that uh, in the paper. They're I, trying I to don't. Get um, I can't imagine that they would not because they started. Right? Bios. They've been mm -hmm. working on that for yeah, they two have, years. Right. Yeah. So that, this is definitely, I mean, you talked to Jack Wilson. He is all over this like wet blanket. I have a side thing. It's not mentioned here. And it, I just, you know, we're getting bombarded with all this information from all over the, the state. The country with what people sure. are doing for this. One of the items was in Chicago. We're talking about a Comcast and an AT&T giving two months free broadband internet to low income. Uh -huh. Did you all look into that? We, we did. Uh, Mr. Combs had looked through that um, as well. Um, and I believe with Comcast, it is not is available not correct. in our area. So the ones that are available in our area, we've listed here for you um, and we get them just every about day. every day and we have him check out each oh, one of them okay mm -hmm. all right thank you so, so these 100 mobile hotspots if somebody isn't qualified for them can they still get these on the open market at sure. 60 dollars a month sure there so yes anybody, there are anybody in queen Anne's county can get internet service at their house for 60 dollars a month that's one option correct okay well i mean that's reasonable because mm -hmm. i think they, it, right it, now they're it, backlogged it well, they are, but what I'm saying is if we get to the point where you have a level of who gets them and who doesn't, everybody can get them. Some might, some might be subsidized, some might not, right. but everybody in Queen Anne's County can get this hotspot. Yes, this is not an offer that is just for the school system. This is an offer to the public. So we, maybe we should, can we at some point put on there so the public, if they want to do it on their own, they know how to get this hotspot? Well, this, this is, is going three? on. This is live, Mr. Smith, so they're getting well, it right it's now. it's a supply, but at hey, some point it right. will be. I mean, it gives people an option if this goes on for two months, five months, or ten months, hopefully the supply could catch up with the demand. With your permission, could Mr. Strait put this on the website? This is on on the website, but we can certainly put this page separately on, on the website. Make we a, would certainly bear no responsibility, and we don't right. generally advertise for businesses. Correct. Um, but we included this on this PowerPoint so that everybody could have it. We generally do not advertise like that because I, I, I when you do that <laughs> we get them every day yeah but, wait, but yeah. It's, okay. it's like we've got Atlantic broadband Delmar Wi-Fi all the ones listed down there I did not know until tonight that you could get mobile hotspots anywhere in Queen Anne's County because in some of the rural areas if you can hit a tower you can get it mm -hmm. but I know there's places that you just can't get it that it's very interesting that for $60 a month which I think is reasonable for internet service to get that well i will tell you mr smith i live down Reed 8 south and uh i tried to get a hot spot trying to and wouldn't happen so but but now we're talking but you're i mean i'm reading this and you're sure telling me we can right great there's some like you said there are some spots and, where it just doesn't and, pick up and and i think it's it's really the the individual family and where they where they live but they're available now whether or not works i'll i'll give you a real world example my wife and I have a hot spot where we live in a very rural part of Churchill. Sometimes it works great, sometimes it doesn't. But that's our only option. Um, so so th this thing not make you any better. This this is no silver bullet. So we could give these things out, and they still might not work. There's that. Uh, there, there there's that, that possibility. Oh, I can say. I mean, I live in Centerville, and the same thing. I have conference calls all day long. Sometimes I cannot get online because I have a mobile hotspot as well. I have to call on the telephone if it works, you know, that way. It just, I mean, there's areas in my house where, and I don't live in a big house, where I can't even use my telephone. It just depends there. You said it already. There really is no silver bullet, but we have to do our level best to ensure that we are at least opening up access. Any given day in this building, the internet doesn't work. Mm -hmm. It's well, so just I mean, how it is. You know, so we're not going to be able to meet 100% service in Queen Anne's County no matter what you do. I mean, that, it just, it's just not a The school system isn't the solution for broadband across the, the county. Right. We do our best to give access where we can. If the device is working and if internet is available in that area, we're good. If internet isn't available on any given day, just like it may not be here, 
you just won't have it. And you try again later that day or tomorrow or whatever. So it's not any 100% guarantee for anything, just like we don't have here in this building or at home. But I mean, we're not gonna be able to reach, unless the county or state does something for the whole place geographically, more towers, whatever they have to put up. Um, Infrastructure. It's not gonna be there. It for, depends. Well, yeah. we'll work the on it. The start is, what are the requirements to make sure <clears throat> that we do not leave somebody out? And we don't know how many of those somebodies we have in actuality, we know basically. So <clears throat> there are ways, once you identify what your, your mass is to qualify our programs with the state board and the, the law and our own requirements, then it's up to IT minds to figure out how we reach those families so that those children have equal access to learning capabilities. Now, what we're discussing is something that happens after we get all the rest of this understood, which is what I think you were trying to do. Uh, You're trying to institute this so that some of this is happening right away, right? We're not going to oh, wait we, till right. next fall. It'll, 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 as, as soon as they arrive. Right. They arrive. We're going to put There's them in the very, hands of right. students. Very stringent requirements that we are, we have to provide in order to use something that 90% of the people can enjoy and 10% can't. We have to figure ways to get the 10% mm -hmm. access to the same learning capability. Correct. Uh, you know, we could go on and on and on, and I've been in particip uh, participating in discussions on internet for the county, uh, which collapsed because it was a Ponzi scheme, and now it's still going on. It's going to take forever. <clears throat> and the vote isn't for sure, because Ken Island has it, uh, District 2 has most of it, District 3 has it, District 1 doesn't have it the last mile connection is going to be very expensive. So other people are going to have to pay. It, the conversation goes on and on and on. Well, let's deal with us. And let's find out who the folks are that need the help and let's get it to them. And let's have everybody, now whether they use it or not is their choice. We provide, they use. So, seems like a simple game. That's the plan. Okay. So, about, um, Queen Anne's County High School, you don't have the as getting a access one of the little kits. Queen Anne's County. So it'll, it'll be a phase in. Uh, right now, um, you could uh, a family could go right to uh, the parking lot uh, by the portables, and and that signals relatively okay right now County correct uh you could also do it at ken island high school uh on the parking lot side on the where the football field is um depending where you are right there you could get internet access as well uh so we've been we've been spot checking all of our schools Good. in some places it's it's better than others what we found is if we go this route the signal will be much stronger um so this is phase one uh again to attack our most neediest areas so we plan to phase this in um for the remainder of the school year in a hopes by the time we get to june all of our schools will have the outside wi-fi oh okay that's our plan and i would advertise too to just let because some of these high school kids aren't aren't getting their education and they need I, 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 I mean obviously they can go to Churchill Elementary and get the you know get sure work, but sure I just think uh, and, yeah most we more we can tell them sure so I, I, I'm I, glad I, you're doing I, that I, I would agree thank you Captain Kelly so as far as purchase orders just to clarify this first set that went out we don't have to have a vote on the next set if it gets beyond the twenty five thousand just to reiterate that we will have to. Right, and they haven't okay. gone out yet. Okay, mm -hmm. I just, and so, I just and want to make everybody to your point, aware of that. Everybody will know when, when they're up. Okay, great, thank you. So let me just highlight uh, some of our teacher results and let me lead this by, by saying, we simply have awesome teachers. Um, what this shows you, number one, is just about every one of our teachers took this survey 
And what the first question is really asking is, have you reached out to your student and some students in some kind of fashion, checked in with them? Check that out. That's 83% with no expectation to do online teaching or anything. Um, and I know certainly superintendent myself as former classroom teachers would be doing the same. And I think it just speaks to the dedication that our teachers have that they wanted to reach out to their students well before we set it up as any kind of expectation. Um, and simply, we were looking at you know these these next two again. It's a cross section. Their their estimate of percentage of students that have access, um, and the big one really there at the bottom. How comfortable um, do they feel about delivering resources online? Um, and that's equally strong. Uh, that's just about eighty. Um, uh, about 80, 86, 87 um, percent. That's very, very um, powerful. You know, so when we, you know, had to launch there on April the 1st, uh, I felt very confident um, about the results of this and, and what our teachers are able to do. Uh, equally, we wanted to check in on our employees, specifically our teachers, about their internet access. You can see the vast far majority does. We do have seven that do not. Um, again, if you have access, but is it, um, is it, is it reliable? So, you know, we, we think about students, but we also have to think about our employees, specifically our teachers, to be able to help to deliver. So the last thing as part of this survey, yes, Mr. Anderson. When you have a group like the teachers who are not comfortable, there should be a push. If you're not comfortable, why? And have a checklist. So you all well, it, it almost, I mean, it matters, but we have, we've offered professional development and will continue to because they have to well, get say, comfortable. Yeah. But yeah. It would be good to know. It may be that their students don't have internet so it won't be useful it it'd be nice to know why our teachers a very small quantity of them uh, are not comfortable in teaching over the internet that's all I mean, it, it could be something that we don't know we can assume that that's the correct answer and it probably is well I, and i would just add to that most of what we found through that survey results end up being our primary teachers um, those teachers from pre-k to two um, you know yeah the 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 day-to-day -day kind of interaction that that they reading books? i'm sorry did they get chromebooks yeah. the, they do not Children? that's from that's from <laughs> from three but they do interact with a lot of different technology but we we've targeted that we also heard that from our primary principals as well um same reason so what I wanted to share with you here was just some other survey results, because we asked them what, are, what additional resources, what supports, and many of these things have actually been taken care of. Uh, the teachers said, you know, the elementary teachers, hey, you know, our students in grades three and four, they didn't, you know, we don't issue those to go home, uh, but we do now. Uh, and all of our schools, and we're happy to say, our third and fourth graders, uh, when we've allowed limited access to the buildings, that was the first thing uh, that principals wanted. They heard that loud and clear from the teachers. So uh, we're very proud that that's, that's happened. Uh, certainly some resources, uh, Google Meet, and I'll talk about that in a minute, um, in Google Hangouts. So our platform, which is in Google Suites that we've been using now for just around six years, uh, Google Meet um, is the, uh, the platform that's used for uh, interaction um, is, and can be done safely between teachers and students. One of the biggest things that that I, I always remind folks, especially as, as we moved into this, because you know there's always an abundance of, I, I need more tools or I'd like to use this tool. <laughs> and, and we've sent this out to our, our families as well, is uh, student safety and privacy is number one. And we want to make sure of that. That's why some jurisdictions uh, had gone out there with Zoom platform that's been very popular. Uh, however, uh, there's been a lot of media attention uh, around not having the privacy component such as Google Meet does. In fact, uh, just this week, we received not notification um, that the, the government agencies will no longer be using the Zoom platform because of safety and security reasons. So um, we've only allowed Zoom between adults. Uh, we have not allowed it between uh, students. However, effective Thursday at 5 o'clock, um, no employee in, in Queen Anne's County Public Schools will be able to use the Zoom platform. Now, with that said, we did hear that a lot of our teachers wanted uh, Zoom professional development. So within a, uh, just about a 24-hour period, we've trained uh, just over a third of our teachers, which is pretty amazing. Um, they wanted um, more professional development on Google Classroom. I had an opportunity to observe.
observe that. Uh, and I can't tell you how proud I was to observe it. You, we had PE teachers in there. We had art teachers in there. We had teachers in every content area. And I will tell you what made me so proud is that they're trying and they're seeing that as a tool. And some of them that, that, that might not be as tech savvy, they're trying that technology. And, and the more they do it, the more comfortable they're going to get. So, you know, kudos again to our teachers of trying something new. Um, we also heard that teachers said, um, you know, I'd like to get some materials out of my classroom or my students need more printed materials. Um, so with the superintendent's permission, our principals do have limited access to their building, those protocols. So we've been able to get more printed resources uh, out to our families, which has been amazing. Um, we talked about access to the internet. And then certainly as we moved uh, through this process, it became very clear about setting up a set of expectations for teachers. And as we we met, and again, uh, as Mr. Pender said, let's not forget we've only been in this about three weeks. Um, so we continue to learn more. Um, and that really moves us into the second phase, which is where we are now. Uh, phase two of our implementation began uh, with students on April the 1st, uh, and it began on March the 30th, we had two days of professional development uh, with our teachers, some planning time, and then uh, we began that interaction piece more formally uh, on April the 1st. Uh, I'm not going to go in, in in great detail due to our time, but certainly um, what we've communicated that in collaboration with our supervisors and our principals, it is a set of expectations for our teachers. Um, and that goes through really what we call three guiding principles. Number one is keeping the main thing the main thing, and that's uh, student learning uh, at its forefront. Again, encouraging teachers uh, to use the resources that they have um, that are accessed, that are approved resources to be able to interact with students students uh, appropriately. Uh, the second phase of that was really in the planning, and I'll go into that in a second. We've required that every one of our teachers have a continuity of learning uh, plan for these next four weeks. So what is up on every school system website is a two-week plan by every teacher, and there's also, which will be coming shortly, which is in the next two weeks. So what we wanted to be able to communicate to our families and our community, uh, not only is transparency, but what is my child expected to learn and interact act with with their teacher uh, over the course uh, of this next four week period. Again, if this closure continues, those will be updated as well. Um, with that, we also set some maximum guidelines to start. These are some best practices, uh, and I'll just highlight. So for an example, at, at the high school level, uh, 45 minutes per teacher with a maximum of three hours a day. Um, you know, and I think the other thing is the superintendent and I and working with our leaders um, as we put these guidelines out, um, we've been preaching not only flexibility, but we've also been preaching being realistic, and we've also been preaching being compassionate because none of us know the family lives of our employees or of the teachers or of the students that we serve. Uh, we know that there are many families uh, that are juggling multiple students at home in which they're trying to educate. Uh, they're also trying to do their jobs at home. Uh, some have lost their jobs. Some have lost people. So what our approach is keeping this realistic, keeping kids engaged, keeping them learning. Uh, we've received numerous feedback uh, of appreciation uh, because there are some states and some jurisdictions that are asking students to do nine, eight hours worth of work. And I think that we have to be realistic. Um, and as we said, these are guidelines. These can certainly change as we move forward. We wanted to give teachers flexibility. We wanted to give families flexibility and know that this is a steep learning curve We've never done this before, um, and so that's that's been you know very successful to begin with. Um, I, I, and I'm not sure how you came to that. That was one of my concerns too. For a high school kid who goes six hours a day of classes, and we you've maxed it in capital letters. You are they're not allowed to go more than three hours. Is it three hours a day? Is that for the I, teachers or for the students? That's for students. Yeah. Um, and that's, so. I, my, the students don't have anything to do except some of them, some are babysitting, I know that. But I, I just don't have a problem. As you reevaluate, I think that could be much higher. So, again, 
this national best practice, which is where we got these these actually numbers from. And and again, Captain Kelly, to your point, it's a place to start. Yeah, right. um, so you know, sure and sure, 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 absolutely. And and we've also encouraged, uh, and our teachers are naturally doing this as parents are saying, hey, my my little students, you know, moving along. Do you have some more for him to do? Uh, teachers are are more than willing to provide that. Again, as we put in the document, um, this. As we move forward and we learn, um, we certainly anticipate that that these will have to be adjusted. But they're they're good practice right now. Um, I don't know if there's any continuity of learning plan across this country that's 100% perfect. And and I think as as we're all learning and as we're all making adjustments, and you'll see that's part of the the last phase, which is monitor, evaluate, make adjustments. Um, I'm not trying to say this wrong. It's just I'm just giving my two cents that it. I think it's, at first I was alarmed, like I can't, they got to teach him more than three hours a day. I mean, he, he needs more than three hours a day. So I've instituted it myself. He's doing 20 or 30 SAT questions every day to get ready for that test. But I just think that it, it does need to be reevaluated, especially if we go way into, into the summer time. So I highly recommend it. And sure. I think you may get, maybe not, but I think you may get input from the teachers that they could do more. Well, you know, sure. And, Not the teachers, and, the students. Could and, more and, that and again, we'll, we'll continue to monitor. I think, That's you know, fine. being being three weeks in and in a significant change, okay. um, it's always easy to add. It's it's more difficult to pull back. Okay. And I think you're hearing from, from parents in other jurisdictions where they have may set the bar. And, and it's... And, and again, I want to go back to, you know, and I think, and, and if Mr. Evans was here, and I'm going to put my student service hat on, there is an extreme amount of stress in households today that we've never seen before. And I think that has to be realistic, and we have to consider families in the whole part that are going through changes and difficulty and, and stress that they've never experienced before. And, and I think to go at this kind of a slow and steady approach um, uh, is the right way to go um, as, we, as we learn more and, and increase that, that capacity for students. So um, thank you I'll for that. I'll leave it to your best judgment. I'm just, just Well, and, and, and I will tell you, the superintendent and I, I would say at least, if not three times a week, twice a week, uh, we're on a conference call with our principals and we're constantly seeking feedback. The superintendent and I ask them all the time, how are your teachers? What are you hearing from your teachers? What are concerns that you're hearing? Um, so as we hear them, we address them. Uh, but I can say in the last two conference calls that we've had, um, you know, everybody's everybody's transitioning uh, into this new model. And, and families also will continue to distribute those resources for families to use. So if you happen to be in a home where you just need more for your child, then you have resources that you could use with your child. But if you're in a home where you're at your wit's end and you can do not one more single thing, your child isn't losing because of that. So we did allow a great deal of flexibility with that. And as you see, Part three, phase three of this plan does incorporate the evaluation and continuous monitoring, um, and, and we'll see how it goes. This plan has been implemented now for uh, just, four days. Just, no, it's been five. So for five days. Well, with the yes, <coughs> with the planning, we're we're mm -hmm. three. Yeah, just I mean, beginning April three, 1st. week three. Right. So, but <laughs> April first for first. this. But yes, <laughs> April first. Correct. Yeah. That's why we didn't have the meeting last week because it's, there was no sense in trying to evaluate moly. evaluate yeah. data that's not there yet. Right. It, yes, and and uh, I, I will tell you the we had a a conference call with our principals and uh, the superintendent was in a, um, a high level meeting with other superintendents and I was leading that on her behalf and uh, and I was giving them direction and literally within 20 minutes Dr. King came in and sat down and said, what Mr. Pluski told you is now not correct. Now this is the change. So what was important about that is that our leaders got to see how fast information changes and how we all have to be fluid uh, and flexible because it, it, it changes today. We just got some more information, so. That's the one thing about our species. <laughs> be able to do that. We have to adapt in That's order right. to survive. That's right. And we have to, and have to be flexible and we have to be patient and um, just 
Just take it easy, baby. That's you know. That's I, it. I, I, every time, my, Ms. My, Morset says all the time. All my breathe. time. Breathe. Yeah, breathe. I, I, my staff. Yes. You know, I, I know how I how it is with my staff and my family and wh where we all are. So I can only imagine a daunting, um, catastrophic things people are going through right now. Situations. So let's you know, breathe. Let's just right. breathe, and we'll do what we can the That's best right. for our students. That's right. Well, in support right. of our families, too, I just read in the paper yesterday that on, in Anne Arundel County, um, something like a 25% increase of domestic violence cases. And I'm like, yeah. It's, and, and, and that's, we can't, yes. we can't even touch the mental health issues right no. now. I know, it's just We awful. will be dealing with that, though, when schools get open again because of the isolation of our students. But I, let me go back to this. I, I had a question. I, what are we hearing from the principals and our teachers? Are, are the students, are they're connecting with the students? Mm -hmm. The supervisors are out there supporting our, our principals and mm -hmm. some of our teachers who, mm -hmm. and, I'm, and the IEP students? <laughs> Sure, we, there's there's a variety. Absolutely, okay. uh, absolutely, and 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 trust me that if our principals, if there was an issue, they're going to bring it to our attention. Um, yes, the the supervisors are meeting with uh, their teachers at their particular levels, uh, reaching out to them, knowing what resources are available. They're sharing state resources um, with them. Our special education staff, which is out there trying to schedule IEP meetings if, if, if that's allowable by the parent, if the parent agrees to that. Um, those services are being provided. Our ELL services are being provided. Um, I would say probably one of of the the next big hurdles that that we're going to be tackling is is grading um, and I'll just give a short commercial on that um, as we ended the second trimester which which we were lucky because that ended on March 13th which was actually the last day of the second trimester so we began the third trimester on April the 1st um, and then we finished out our third marking period uh, on April the 3rd and then we started the fourth marking period here uh, just this week on April um, the 6th so, and the, and the guidance document that we had sent out for secondary students, because uh, it only impacts them in this particular instance, um, that uh, we have the philosophy of the superintendent about doing no harm. So uh, that's a pretty consistent about the notion of freezing a grade. Um, in the third marking period, meaning uh, not to do the child no harm. It's not the child's fault that we've had two weeks. Um, there's a gap, obviously. Um, so we've worked with our principals and, and everybody was in certainly agreement with that. That was best practice. Um, and allowing students this opportunity to increase their grade uh, as students came back online, redoing assignments, that kind of thing. Uh, but the notion that whatever the grade was on the 13th, it's not gonna go any lower than that. Um, we just received information today, the superintendent did, shared with us, uh, around grading graduation requirements and there's some things Dr. Kane will share at the end that are some questions that we still don't know right now. Um, so that locally is going to be uh, the next thing that we tackle because um, and, and teachers are starting to ask those questions so we want to make sure that we're providing them with the right information as well. Um, but on the, on the assessment on the accountability side uh, yeah so the Maryland State Department of Education did seek a waiver um, for the um, from the U.S. Department of Education for the ESSA um, requirements, so that's that's really in the MCAP area. So they've suspended those. Um, thank you, Mr. Fister. Um, and and with the Maryland uh, assessments um, there as well. Now. The thing to also, into caveat, those are federal mandates. Local mandates or state mandates would be in U.S. <coughs> government and then in the, the eighth grade government assessment, which would have been piloted this year. That is actually uh, law. So to change that would have a change in law. So all of this is still part of, I think superintendent's gonna talk about it at the end, waivers, that process, all that's kind of going on behind the scenes, realizing that this is a, an unusual situation. Um, but Mr. we were- Mr. Pulisky, the Maryland report card. And, and absolutely, the Maryland report card, that, that plays into that. So these assessments, what's interesting about this is in the MCAP, uh, remember we transitioned from PARC to MCAP, this was the year that we were going to field test items. So now those field test items have to be bumped out now a year. Certainly, you know, the concern about the gap, and then as we move forward going into the fall, that could be even a, a more of a significant gap. So we'll continue, but, but Mrs. Harper, you bring up a good point about um, 
you know, the ESSA requirements and, and the data reporting requirements that come to that. Our, this year is going to have little asterisks next to it. And little asterisks, COVD-19. Yes. But, I mean, so all of these are going to be skewed. So we, this year is, Do I need hate to say it, a wash. Do need a clarification, though, on the grade thing. You brought it out. Um, I'm sorry? The grade thing. Sure. This is definitely impacting primarily juniors because they are going to be doing applications for college. Uh -huh. So the grade, that, and this is the last semester, <coughs> they get grades for their college apps. Uh -huh. Now, you're saying it just stopped and they're going to make a determination on what happens fourth fourth quarter so we're working on that now uh, we just received some information today from dr. Kane and the superintendents everybody's in the same situation third quarter fourth quarter what's the fourth quarter grade look like how's that averaged in what's it look like on the transcript um, uh, what does that get coded on? So for an example, is it gonna say COVID-19? That particular child took that course remotely um, in the fourth marking period. So we've already engaged our high school principals in this conversation. We've gotten their feedback. Um, you've probably heard uh, across the state, in, in matter of fact, many um, states have gone you know, with a passing, a, a, a P or an incomplete. Uh, University of Maryland has gone with a P, an incomplete, or if you like your grade to be able to take your grade. So we're looking at all of those things to ensure that it's fair, um, that it's equitable, um, and uh, you know, students care about their grades, right? Parents care about their grades. Uh, grades translate onto the transcript and for college. So it, you, you bring up a valid point, Captain Kelly, and we're looking at all of that. Okay, we so want to come to uh, a decision. We, we have not today, again, about Correct. two hours ago, we've Correct. got four hours ago, we just got some new information. Mm -hmm. um, to that point, colleges aren't blind to the situation. Absolutely. So. Right. Right. They're going to see coming in that there's a difference in these transcripts versus Absolutely. The previous years. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that's exactly right. And I mean, the whole country is like that. Mm -hmm. So when they're looking at acceptance in colleges and stuff, but um, I just, I just don't know where, you know, Maryland has high standards. I love Maryland's high standards, you know, compared to some other states. But is that going to be an, an agreement? throughout or I mean I don't know how that works right so superintendents are really of uh, the mindset that there needs to be some consistency across because grades are not um, mandated by the state grades are local district decisions <clears throat> and while we certainly don't want to have uh, Queen Anne's doing something that's going to negatively impact students in Talbot and vice versa we all agree to a couple of things we agree number one first do no harm so hold harmless those we, we're coming up with some principles, some just some guiding principles, because what some, one district does with grades is going to be different from what another district Don't does. Don't get me started about we, weighted grades. <coughs> Don't get me started about weighted grades. Exactly. Exactly. So if, if one district decides that they're going to go ahead and do that and another district doesn't, then students are inconven you know, inconvenienced. Right. So we've agreed that we're going to do no harm, number one. Um, there are going to be some instances where you have children who were not passing in the first marking period, I mean, first semester, or and not passing if you're middle school, whatever, through the third marking period, or if you're in high school through the first part of the f second semester, right. and probably won't pass for the second half of the second semester. Those are just some small individual cases, but in general, the idea is do no harm. Some districts are saying, you know, maybe we ought to think about taking an average of the grades, the marking period grades that we already have freeze it at that point and anything a student does beyond that could be could enhance their grade um, so there are a lot of different things that um, districts are looking at but just across for some consistency is no one is going no student is going to be disadvantaged because of this time working from home so that that is the agreement uh, most districts I can tell you um, are in agreement with the uh, uh, pass um, incomplete and um, it could be that we all decide to go that way, but the decision was not made. I've been on conference call after conference call and several today. Um, but, you know, we're going to come back to it. We are looking for consistency, but it was not decided today. Can I ask you about graduation requirements? Mm -hmm. I, I did see in one um, of Dr. Salmon's uh, announcements that she would allow people to graduate if they had 
just the state minimum requirements. Are we still adhering well, to that? Yeah, that's that's anyway. That's okay. COVID-19 or no COVID-19. If you make the graduation requirements, your district, making sure that you have the credits in the right places and everything else that goes along with that. A superintendent and I do, just like everybody else, we waive, you know, credits all the time for children. Okay. So it's that's not that's not um, unusual. So are the guidance counselors at this time looking at that for the, for the seniors? Right? They, some, of, some of them are a part of work groups that are going on, you know, with MSDE. But in general, there has not been a decision from MSDE. Dr. Salmon is going to take it to the state board. The initial uh, date was August, the, I mean, sorry, April the 28th. But she's looking to do a special session on the 14th. And perhaps this will get settled then. Okay. But there it has been no decision. Okay. I'm sorry to, to preempt this. No, There's no, some questions that I've had from some no, parents. No, mm -hmm. I was just going to add, uh, we, we've just recently met with our high school principals and our school counselors. Uh, we know how many students um, you know that they're concerned about that fit into multiple categories. So, so we have needs all that. Are being addressed. Yep. We, uh, we know who has mm -hmm. what and who needs what. Okay, that's, thank you. That's mm -hmm. what I was that's getting well at. Your passing complete is would take the place of a grade or is it optional? Correct. Or is it, it would, optional? It would take the place of a grade. Of the entire Second. semester? S right. Like if they were doing really well in the semester, it would just end up... It could. We haven't made the decision, but that's what it would be. Because those if grades in that semester are... If, if they didn't do so good first semester, it might be bringing their grades First up. semester is a whole different set of classes. So second semester is a, a new set. So you're talking about pass, fail, in addition to whatever grades they already had it. Up first there. semester doesn't... That's already taken care of. We're talking about second semester for I high school. I understand. I'm saying if someone is the first semester isn't doing didn't do great, but they're really doing well in the second semester, if you turn that into pass-fail, then you disadvantage them. There's not going to be an easy answer. That's, I guess that's part of the reason why it's taken so long. Everybody but did. right, okay. it, it is it is going to be something. Don't I think know the yet. The colleges but. are allowing them to choose. Maryland, I think, was going to let them choose whether they did the class, the course, the grade, or. If I understand the rules, the state superintendent doesn't tell us how to do grading and so forth. But we, school boards around, suggest to the superintendent of the state what we'd like to see. But if there's no agreement, we do what we think makes sense within the rules. And the rules include giving out grades. That's the way it works. Okay. Well, so yes and no. you should be telling them what we want to see and so long as it doesn't violate any rules, then at least we can get it settled. Now, there are some things that are not in our control, and those have to do with tests and so forth. But we can make a judgment about how this grading is going to work, whether the superintendent of the state uh, board agrees with it or not. We get to make that choice. Right. Grading, just like I said before, is a local decision. That's right. But when it comes to high schools, you have to consider the credits. That is not a local decision. Um, that's a state decision. So but the I state, but I just, want, I just want to be clear, the state is enlisting school districts input with regard to grading and credits. So we are sharing, you know, what we what we think. We just there's just not been a decision. It would be yet. great if all of us did it alike. And some of us will never be able to do it like we do it. Because they have a different uh, group that they have to deal with. Sure. But we need to give information to our own families and students to the best of our ability and which we have been doing. And I don't think it's wise for us to sit back and wait for somebody to tell us how to grade our students. I think we should decide how we think they ought to be graded and suggest that other people consider it, if we can. Separate from the, uh, separate from the um, credit, Doug, and separate from credits, you know, I mean, if. We have a designated amount of credits we have to have that are required by the state. We got to meet that. I mean, there's no. But how they get there and our grading of them, 
that that is an end like you just said it's I've, an I've said it twice it's a local decision right right okay. grades are a local decision our regs allow me to decide how we're going to do um, some of that but I certainly it's not an independent decision you know and so no, a lot no. of yeah it's all of the, it's our decision too right I mean we're not, uh, uh, so I would like to have some more information from around the state I would and like I, to and, I've, and I've yep and I've got uh, a lot of information most of the districts have weighed in and pretty much everything Everybody's doing what we're doing for the third marking period. And I can tell you that everybody pretty much is where we are right now for the fourth. I just got off of the conference call earlier today and there is a lot of discussion, but once again, a decision has not been made, not independently, not as a group. We've come up with some things that we wanna ensure happen across the board that I just mentioned hold harmless, uh, make sure students are not disadvantaged. There will be some students who, even if even if Queen Anne's County went with pass fail, there will, or pass incomplete, there will be some students who have earned an F because they hadn't done anything, you know? Um, and, and when I say anything, I'm, I'm taking away the equity piece. I'm taking away that they don't have access to the internet. So when you've been, you know, um, uh, supported by paper pencil, conversations, those kinds of things, there are a few students who are going to fall into that category. That's not just Queen Anne, that's just how it is across, you know, the country. But for the most part, everybody is where exactly where we are. And that that is it we, we're really trying to make sure that we have an unfairly disadvantaged because then there's the question about gpas well if you go to pass fail that doesn't impact your gpa that does not impact your gpa is what it was it does impact <coughs> it for what you've done up to march 13th it doesn't make it any lower it won't make it any lower. It, oh, do, it, it does. So they'll count right, the grades it, up it, to March 13th. Correct. It doesn't. Oh, okay. It doesn't make There's it no any lower. That I didn't understand. That, that is You're correct. You're just talking fourth quarter. That's right because we already have our decision for what happened. You know, for third quarter, Mr. P just went through that. The question is about fourth quarter. Okay. There is some talk about maybe we ought to think about if we're going to do pass fail, maybe the uh, or pass incomplete. Maybe there's an incentive if you add maybe a quality point. You know, onto it to ensure that kids actually do the work. So there are so many things to consider that no one, including this superintendent, is willing to make a quick decision about it uh, until we have a real good handle on how it's going to play out. We, we sort of think about scenarios and play them out to the end so we can anticipate what students are going to be impacted in what ways. There is not going to be 100% I'm so happy Happy with the way the school system has handled this. That's not going to happen. It never does. Thank you. <laughs> so, you know, we, we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing for our students. And again, not disadvantaging children is the number one piece of that. So in a few weeks, we'll have a good yeah. so clear I, look at what's going, what's happening and what we can anticipate doing. I think we should hear a recommendation. You will. As how to handle it. We vote on it, and then this whole team in this room has joined together, and that's it. That is what the plan is. That's well, a good plan. I agree. We have a work <coughs> session on the 15th. We could possibly put it off if we vote on it tonight. We could put it back to the third week being... Next week. Well, uh, you're right. I, excuse me. I'm yeah, and, and we're going to need some time to get back with the high school that's, principals that's and, the, exactly and what all I'm the saying. right the principals again. They've given us the data so that we know where students, every single student is, um, in terms of what they've done and what we need to do with them. Yet, uh, we do anticipate that there will be some waivers from the state board um, in terms of other things like service learning hours and right. you know CTE and those kinds of things. Um, but as as far as a recommendation for a grade, we, we've got to hear more from from. That's our, what I'm saying. If we put our work session back to <coughs> April 22nd, um, that would give definitely give everyone some more time. If if everybody is amenable to that change, but we can do that later. But I, I just want to put it out there that yeah. I, I would certainly love to be able to give the students, the staff, 
the t everybody, Everybody's. the state, uh, this, our, our whole lives, a little bit of time and just breathe and, and, and collect data and, and understand better. Is that, I mean, that's, that's, the, approach me that, right that's now, the approach that yeah. we're taking because it really is not a rush. And I, and I recognize because I get the emails too. Yes. Everybody wants to know what are you doing, what are you doing, what are you doing? But the answer today on April the 8th is that we don't have an answer. We are still working through those scenarios, still really taking care of uh, making sure that we have all the information that we possibly can and playing out various scenarios. We want our students to gain um, from this. We don't want anybody to be disadvantaged. Correct. And I, and I agree with that 100%. The more information you got, the better decision you can make. And you said it right. We've only been in this thing for two to three weeks. <coughs> but at some time, we got to make some decisions sure. so people have to know what we're going to go doing forward. I mean, we can't just keep saying we're getting more data, we're getting more data. We'll have more data next week. We'll have more in two weeks. But I'm just going to pick an arbitrary number. By May the 1st, you know, we have kids going to be graduating students, going into the military, going all over, not the world, but a lot of other places. And they need to know what time frame and how things are going to work, hopefully. We can't wait forever. We got to make some decisions. As, as we get information, the more we get, the more quality uh, decisions we make, but we got to make some decisions. In that is well recognized. We, we are certainly aware of that. <laughs> I think I know, that's all yeah, you can yeah. make different decisions to the state and everybody else, but this board does, has to do what's right for Queen Anne's County and make sure we can move forward. But it, this is a universal problem, Mr. Smith. This is not just, not just here and not just this state. I mean, countries around the world are having this and with significant problems more than we can even know. And that could all be taken into consideration on, in the big picture. But for our picture, we need to sit there and make sure our students, you know, what's going to happen? Well, you know, it's May the 1st. What are you doing, you know, June or whatever when school, okay. quote unquote, will end sometime for, well, this, we, for this year? Yes. So uh, if we could talk about maybe meeting on April 22nd rather than 15th, put that in your notes and we'll have to do a vote on sure. that. In the meantime, Mr. Pluski, let's let our folks know about what's going on with College Board SAT and AP testing. Yes, and I think that's, you know, certainly with our high school folks, I think that's, you know, with our high school teachers know, but the SAT obviously has been canceled. Um, however, the AP testing will take place uh, from May 11th to the 22nd. That will be a 45 minute assessment. Um, so our AP teachers, know about that. I believe that they're pushing that out to their students as well. We did put a, a, a and I'm not going to go through it, but there is a, a list of additional information or resources about AP testing um, for our community so they can go into that as well. But we just wanted to make sure our community was aware of those two components. It's um, on the website because I tried to hit onto those and none of them worked. So to, just so if it's on the website, I'll try the website. Okay. Thank I need you, to Captain address I'll let you know. One Thanks. thing about the SATs, if you don't mind. Um, so a student hasn't had the opportunity to take an SAT and he or she is heading to college in the fall. Is SATs, are they addressing that issue? Um, normally by now they've already been done. They've already had them. But you might have a senior that's taken that one more time. Correct. Um, to, to try and get a higher grade, a higher percentage on it. You test. know, I don't. I haven't had any cases that have come my way okay. around that, but I can certainly look into that. Because honestly, um, right now they should already have had their letters out. They should already have they, had their acceptance they, letters. They should, but it, there might be, you Sometimes know, a senior a junior, for whatever reason. Yeah. Sure, Sometimes that might be taken. Trying to get Most often it's a junior, but it might be a senior just trying to maybe one more time to get a higher <coughs> score. Um, okay. I can certainly, you know, check on that from, you know, Locked. what's what's the higher ed component to that. I, I have got inquiry too, is that Queen Anne's County was going to pay for these juniors to take their first one, and th that all got canceled. And so a, parent, a couple parents asked me, is Queen Anne's County still going to pay for a, the first SAT? Because we were going to do it the 14th, I think, for all. Yeah, that's a that's yeah, the the district pays for um, okay. both both high schools. Queen, right. So, yes. so when we do our school day SAT again, we'll we'll continue to pay for it when okay. we do it again. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah, when it gets re scheduled, right, rescheduled, I'll pass okay. that on. I, I was asked that. So, and we, we somewhat talked about this, but part of our phase in plan is to continue to evaluate. Superintendent mentioned that a variety of times and continue to evaluate and adjust the plan, get feedback uh, as we continue to adjust and move forward. Uh, and with that, 
um, I'm, I'll turn it back to Dr. Kane. Uh, uh, and some of these things we, we've obviously touched upon, but I think that she wants to communicate some of the bigger pictures of, of what we still don't know. Thank you so much, Mr. P. And you've done a great job of just really trying to illustrate how things change. And, you know, some things are not within our control and some things are, and we want to take it slow and be sure that we're doing the right thing for our students. So we've already had the conversation about graduation requirements. That's with the credit CTE certifications, service learning. And I mentioned that MSDE is going to seek a, a waiver for that one. So we'll wait to hear about that. Uh, we talked about grades for the fourth marking period and second semester. I'm not going to rehash um, that. Other things that we don't know yet are what's going to happen with senior activities and, and graduations. Don't know yet. Um, the state superintendent was on with legislators today, and you know we she's not made a decision. We have asked as a, a group of superintendents that we get some um, notice that's not like the day before April 24th. Uh, a week would help us tremendously, just so that we know what direction we're going in and. And if we need to continue to do learning packets. So we're, you know, uh, yeah. ahead of the game right now for the next set of learning <coughs> packets, but we don't know what's going to happen after the 24th. We just assume, you know, okay. that we'll continue that, to. That, that is very important because a number of these graduation get togethers have cost money and people put deposits down. Absolutely. It's not going to occur. They might be able to get a refund unless it's the host organization has spent too much money getting everything together. Right. And so we don't know until, you know, the either the establishment has closed and they said that they're closed beyond the dates that we would have booked or and nine times out of 10, that is not the case for us right now or if we just are waiting to hear if we're going to be in school. So at this point, it truly is a wait and see. You know, should we send cap and gowns home so that families can, you know, at least take pictures and maybe we do something online um, in terms of speeches and ceremony and that kind of thing. So that is all just up in the air right now. But we're, we're hoping that we get some, some responses to uh, what's gonna happen for the end of the school year. Can I ask? Um, proms are canceled, correct? Well, we have prom scheduled for May. That's after April 24th. So if we don't know, if we're if we're ab if we're able, You're still then sure. Graduation it is still scheduled. Right. It's it's highly Just I see it as highly unlikely, but I don't want to go and be premature correct. about canceling these things because people have not only invested a lot, but it just means a lot. It means a lot to students right and to passage. their families. Exactly. Okay. So I don't want to be premature. And, and, and at least one district um, in our state has canceled some senior um, activities, but that was not without a great deal of thought as well. You know, and, and I don't know their particular situations and if the establishments are not um, going to be open anyway. And I think that that may be the case, sure. but uh, I don't want to be premature and, you know, give every opportunity to have that celebration. Well, we for certainly students. don't know until we can open the state back up. Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as the businesses. So mm -hmm. that in itself dictates dictates what we do. Yep. OK, M Mrs. Smith. Can we talk to our, uh, you can contact with our principals and just look at some different options because mm -hmm. it it's going to be different this year than it's ever been before. Absolutely. I mean, a month ago we were worried about tickets on the football field. Now we're worried if we were going to have graduation in, in anyway. We're going to have it somehow. But if Don't we could just talk to our principals, maybe some of our student representatives. Absolutely. And sit there and say, okay, what are a couple things, if this scenario pops up, we could do it this way. If it backs down, we can maybe do a more elaborate one. But just have some options so people know that something's, you know, you're going to graduate and you're going to have something uh, something because it's a big deal and i don't think it's reasonable to, in september because a lot of kids are going to be off everywhere after the summer you know just something and it might not work out but at least have some plans and some options open so we can discuss it or they can discuss it that's the plan and some of the other things that we'll we'll have to um you know sort of wait and see with regard to perhaps having to adjust our school calendar we don't know we've not gotten the word or the state board has not yet uh waived the first 10 days the 16th through the 27th so we don't know what's going to happen with that and until we know what's going to happen with those days we can't make an adjustment to our calendar because if they're going to waive those days then we know what to do if they're not going to waive those days then we start thinking about the three snow days that we didn't use 
things. We start to think what days are professional development, what days are student days. So it just depends. What we can say tonight is that Friday and Monday are holidays for our staff. They are not expected to be doing online work with students. Those are holidays. So that that goes, um, that stays, and that's been communicated already. We'll continue to reiterate that. So can I ask a question? They're supposed to be giving out backpacks and food on this Friday. They will still be, those folks will still be doing that. Thursday. No, we do it on Thursday. This week we'll do Everything it on Thursday. For Everything for this weekend At, will be given on Thursday. Yeah. Go through. Uh, Thank you. Next week we'll start the first Friday. Okay, great. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, some other things that we are still waiting um, on, it relates to legislation, state legislation, is the adjustment of the timeline for non-renewals of certificated employees, um, annual evaluations, observations, renewing teacher certifications. Some timelines were required requesting be adjusted because of this lapse um, and that's we've got honestly we have a long list of of things that need to be addressed in terms of legislation that's out there and um, we just have to wait the, these th these are some of the many many things and I literally have you know multiple pages of legislation that impacts school districts and um, you know we tried to prioritize get it down to about 20 of them but some waivers will be required by the state um, state board you know so that we can um, and we'll 180 know. days is state law too so correct she's gonna have to Look at that Correct. If, if we can't get the 180 days. And and different states are doing it in different ways. I shared with our superintendents today a uh, proclamation from the governor in Pennsylvania. And he relegated the... Um, you know, suspension of certain laws and the extension of timelines for certain things to the State Education Association so that they could do what they needed to do during, I'll forward it to you, during this, you know, this state As of an emergency. Order? Mm -hmm. oh. It's a proclamation, yeah. That would be that would be yeah. helpful. So different states are going to handle it in different ways, and I have no idea how we're going to handle it in Maryland. But you know, there's a lot of legislation that is going to impact school districts, and we have to really try to get some relief from some of those because some of these things we cannot do mm -hmm. simply because we're not in a brick and mortar building. Correct. So those are just some of the things I wanted to share that are, you know, of immediate concern and we're working on what we can work on. And again, some things are within our control, some things are not. And we'll just continue to press forward, engage our, our families and our, and our educators and, um, and certainly you, the board, and uh, make some decisions as, as we move forward. The, the list of these uh, timelines based on legislative uh, activity. Do you think we should as a board sign something and send it to the delegation of Queen Anne's County and say, hey, we have these problems. Can you push from your side? So we as a PAZAM, our state superintendents, we have forwarded a letter to the state superintendent for some concerns and things that we really need to um, have some attention for. And so I, would say, I would say hang on for one second because sometimes more is not better. Um, you know, she's, she's got quite the job on her hands as well. I wouldn't want to be sitting in her seat right about now. Take and and if we, as, moving, as we move forward, if I believe that that is going to support our cause, I'd be happy to, to help draft that letter. Yeah. Okay. I think, uh, I don't know what she can do other than voice a, uh, a concern, but I think our school system, uh, represented in people in this room, needs to hear, uh, be heard at the legislative level. I, I had conference call today with Senator Cardin and Senator Van Hollen. And well, they're uh, mm -hmm. federal. I'm talking about mm -hmm. the folks that are in the state legislature, the senators and the legislators and so forth. I mean, I the law senators. was created Mr. by yeah, Mr. them. Mr. Ahrens and you mean Gil County. Gilchrist. Yeah. County. What? No. Th these are state delegates. Uh, they are state Shore delegates. Legislators. The Eastern Shore delegation. Yeah. 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 And and that's absolutely a, a thought. What, what we don't want to do is we don't want to create a situation where we're bombarding her and it's not going to make a difference. But well, you know, the sometimes is more isn't better. Us really know all of that that's on that piece of paper so you're going to have to educate us before we do anything sure 
Yeah. There might be something Absolutely. horrendous in there that we better. Well, I assure you, if it was something horrendous, we would be waving that flag. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I can assure and you of that. it won't be the surrender flag. Right, exactly. <laughs> Any exactly. other questions? I, I have one last question. To, on, on the, I, on the um, special ed, I know that's sure. a real challenge. Yeah. Um, but um, after talking to some legislation people in, in May, um, I guess we have a 30-day grace period where we won't get, can't get sued or something if we take a little while to get our IEP for a special ed organized, how we're going to do it. Are you, are you talking about scheduling meetings? I'm just, it, there's an, I guess I heard that IEP 30 day grace period on. I think you're talking about scheduling yes, meetings. And yes. so we're contacting our family. So we don't, we don't have to worry about that um, 30 day meeting. Although that is one of the timelines that some states are asking, the governors are, are saying, Labor. you know, let's try to relax that. And we did ask our senators that we spoke with today for some support in that area, because that's, that's what you're talking about. Right. But we, but we've already started reaching out to our families and, and I think that we'll be okay. But when you're in some of the larger districts, we've got, you know, a, a thousand people. Some districts have 18,000 yeah, people, right? right? But the other to. things they met, brought up was, um, you know, we're obligated by a lot of legal, legal cases and stuff for special ed. So they recommend we keep great detailed um, journal on how we're, what kind of, of items we're helping them with, what kind of their accommodations we sure. are doing. And also, um, because there is an expectation that no matter what, we'll still get sued somehow. So as long as we have it documented and we've done everything we can right. to accommodate that part. And so as I mentioned earlier today, so not only you know are we working with IEPs to the best of our ability, but our county has started to work on an individualized distance learning plan. Right. So that absolutely documents what we're doing with each of the students who has a service that's required, whether it is for cognitive or physical, whatever it may be so we're working through that yeah that was my last one because mm -hmm. in that same meeting the um, guy from Dorchester told mm -hmm. me they have a really good individual distance learning plan instruction so he's offered that up for everyone to take a look at it and and they all are meeting with the state um, Marcella um, at MSDE so she meets with the supervisors regularly so everybody gets the same information and they're pushing out to you know everything that they have so we're and that's one of the areas where our parents are helping so that's a, a good thing we're sitting okay with that and there's a question too whether we should do do new IEPs that accommodate the distance learning thing and right around now as I understand the as I remember this from my past is that that's about where the, when the annual IEP updates occur right around the springtime mm -hmm. so they talk about accommodating the distance learning issue into their new IEP absolutely okay thank you you're welcome Anyone else? Ms. Morissette? I just have some comments, not really questions. I mean, I have two children that are in the school system, one middle school, where he's not as excited about the online learning. Um, <laughs> but I have to say all of his teachers have been in close communication with their students, and he's had science projects, he's had a novel to start reading already, so he's just as busy as he was in the classroom. While I also have the 18-year-old who's special needs with an IEP, and she is totally excited about the online. <laughs> seeing her class on that computer screen and they have sent her entire plan home so we are doing exactly what she does in the classroom so there is continuity which is very important for her if she, if she disrupts her schedule she's totally off so she is thrilled to be back into her groove mm -hmm. so kudos to the two schools i'm involved with they are on it and they're 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 learning the online thing and they're having a ball with it and, and I can just, you know, echo that. And I know that Mr. P said it, you know, at the outset of the conversation about continuity of learning. Our teachers are working hard. They are working hard. They're being creative. A teacher sent me a PowerPoint today, presentation that one of the students did today. And that student was sharing, you know, her experiences. Change. It was about change. How appropriate. <laughs> this is an elementary student and she shared, she even shared pictures of the lunches that she gets. She shared pictures of some of the food that she gets from the backpack programs. She shared pictures of who she thought she needed to thank because of the decisions and the burdens of all of these things because this is new and different and she had, and, and I'm just grateful because I was in there. So she was thanking me as well, but just 
an elementary child, just making use of technology, understanding what this is about and how it impacts everybody, even though it's new. It's changed and we've got to get a handle on it. Yeah. You know. The photo thing, it, it's ironic you say that Queen's County High School is actually going to include in their their yearbook presentation this year about the online learning. So they're encouraging pictures being taken at mm -hmm. home while their students oh, are learning cool. to send in to add to the yearbook. So they're trying to put a positive twist on this whole situation. Yeah. Which yeah. I thought was great. They are. They're doing it they're, and they're doing a great job. They're this, doing a great these job. These are unprecedented times mm -hmm. and uh, I, I just applaud everyone and I, I can't thank everyone enough that's out there doing what they can for our students and across the world what they're doing for families and just, still volunteering and still volunteering still and health care workers and, mm -hmm. and uh, just it's um it makes you humble truly it does are we capturing all the little aspects of this the things we've learned and so a diary just in case something should happen again so that we could, somebody could pull it out of the cobwebs and say, look what they did. Ms. We Mr. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, we have, we are on information overload. We have so many and we, we try to organize it so that because Mr. P is in conferences, I'm in conferences, Mr. Fister is in conference. Mr. So we try to organize it thanks to Mr. Fister so that we have, you know, side by side, you know, all of this information. We're trying to keep it together. Um, and what we were thinking about this morning is if we had a link because some of the groups are asking the same questions and we really like to link the answer if it appears in multiple to the same. So you get the same answer in multiple documents because it's so much information from the districts in the state now that sometimes the answer is asked a, you know multiple times and you're getting a bunch of different answers so you know we we are absolutely um, documenting everything and and holding on to everything and you see when you get information from us quite frequently you get links to so you can see from what other document we're pulling so those things will continue to be codified and um and kept and so that uh we're, we're better advantaged it should it happen again way to get you to do a well-deserved brag <laughs> well, thank you, but but I wouldn't take it myself. I got so many uh, awesome team members, and um, the community has come out to support. And I just may I just say one last thing. I just like to say thank you to our community members because every couple of days we just get the most heartfelt emails to say thank you for what you're doing. Whether it's our employees that do that, or just the community in general, will just say thank you. We know that you're working hard. We see it. My kid's teacher is doing this, that, or the other, and, you know, the food service workers. So we just, that does, and I'm not always able to respond to them right away, but I'd just like to say a collective thank you. We feel the hug, and we greatly appreciate it. I have a question. Are we answering all the questions on our website? All, all done. Okay. We probably had 30 some, maybe 32, 33, something like that questions okay. on that Friday that we got and um, that we put it out there. And then maybe two the next day, we had one yesterday. Okay. So mostly nothing, okay. you know, now. But, but taken care of. Uh, ab the, absolutely. The principals, their questions, their everybody's and, online And actually now. each, uh, we gave the principals, they have a, you know, Ken Allen High School questions at QACPS, and we set something up for them, for their communities, and he, we gave them the flexibility to use that as, as they wish. Okay. Um, so, yes. So everybody's communicating. Yep. We okay. also have a, a, a log, a questions log that's sort of ongoing that our administrators have access to. So it has the question, it has the answer, and it has the initial of the exec team person who responded to that question. So they can, you know, keep going back and they can continue to add to it. We'll continue to respond. If somebody, uh, somebody asked the question, there's somebody down the line. That's gonna right. To, so yeah. it's perfect that they're working communication why. with the whole, the whole district. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I, yeah. I, I was yeah. just worried now about. I understand why we don't have a hotline, because oh, forget what we just said 20 minutes ago. It's <laughs> changed. You know, it would be a, a horror. Yeah, yeah. Well, a hotline. I don't know. I, I, this question thing is because I ask because uh, I, again, everything is fluid. So if there's a question answered and then, oh, 20 minutes later, oh, by the way, in red, that just got changed exactly. because this, this, and this. So at least 
our, our whole district can see this and, and, and be in communication and not getting the wrong information or the changed information. So thank you all very, very, very much. Anyone, any other questions? Okay. Can we take a break? It's 8.30. Is that all right, Mr. Jeff? Okay. So we'll be back in 10 minutes. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Jeff. We're back on. Uh, we now are on current action items. 6.02 textbook adoption. Have we had me on uh, testify on or c contact us? No, no Madam, Madam President, we have not. This action item we request um, on behalf of the superintendent to adopt novels grade six through 12 in algebra and math eight, as you know, from the last time our supervisors were here to present that it has gone out for um, 30 days, a little bit over 30 days, and uh, we've received no public comment. So we would just request these items be approved. Would it be prudent to give it another few, another couple of weeks in order I mean, considering we have not been in school since March 13th, and maybe perhaps send this out uh, at the May was, meeting. Was it prior to March 13th? Yes. Uh, yeah, it was yeah. March. It was just before. It yeah. was just before. It was just before that. So could we give it a little more time and maybe table it until and the does, May meeting? And does that impact any ordering? That was my next question. That's where I was. It, that, yeah, that's, that's why it really, the push to, to move it now so that as we get into April, that we can be having those materials by the first part of July. Well, the textbooks definitely. I don't. I don't see a problem with the textbooks, but, but the, the novels. Nobody has had a chance to look at them. But say, has the public had access to this building to? Correct. They have not. To Correct. Their hands on them. Correct. Yeah. Um, I mean, we had. It had been a short window. I'll, I'll give that. I mean, as far as public access. We had Miss Smith testify on the textbooks, which mm -hmm. from uh, math eight and algebra. One, um, algebra one. Yes. Any, any anyone, anyone want to comment? I, I would be comfortable with the algebra or math, but the other ones, and there were some ones in there that I had some issues sure. with, and I even think some of them didn't get complete. You know, some of them, a couple people rejected a couple of them. Oh. At least one of them, I know. Oh, really? Okay. I I wonder if we could get a. Um, online version you'll we'll have to pay for it but um if we can get an online version so we can post we'll, them we'll put them on the yeah novels. and then that way because they they aren't going to be able point well taken as morris said they aren't going to be able to come in this building but if yep. we can get them online the novels, yep. the novels. um then Mrs. parents Passen can still have access on, we can put them online and we'll revisit those uh and the may meeting the, sure but you know, the textbooks access to like a chapter or two like amazon does so you can get just a, a snippet yes and even uh, the cliff notes may sure, have we'll, something. We can come up with some kind of summary. Sure. Have anything but they would probably have an excerpt from them and, and, and give a synopsis of these books. That way they're online for parents to be able to see what their students are, are reading. I would also like to know what the, the people that rejected it that were in your committee, could, could we have a short explanation of why they rejected it? Or could we just get it, you know, send us an email that explains why? Yeah, and, and Maybe I'll, something I missed. We could even pull back the, wind back the, because Ms. Um, Passon, she said that when we were, she, so we could, she did. We could we tell could. you where to find it in the video oh, clip. She, because she did talk, talk about, about that. that. Okay, good. Thank you. And, and maybe to, to your point, you know, to be fair to the public, if they haven't had access to the Algebra 1 as well, I think we should just mm -hmm. table these until May. Um, we can provide those online or at least provide a okay. portion of that online due to the fact nobody's had for the last three month access to this building to be able to do that. Okay. So doing so, so will not impede having them here for the start of next school year. September. It, it, May, May is, is the absolute deadline. Okay. I would want to go past May just because of that domino effect to prepare for the next upcoming school. When I looked, I saw uh this grant uh, is is this grant coming from somewhere else and we're just using that the money? striving readers grant yes that's correct okay and so, that won't be impacted uh 
there a timeline on that? That timeline's being shifted as well. Okay, good. Okay. The other is for three years worth of books, or is it that's how much the books cost and they turn them back in and we just hit it every third year? I, I'm, I was confused about, you know, $160,000 for textbooks, and then it said over three years. So are we saying that we're paying that much f over three years, or are we paying it up front as a capital expense? It, it is a capital expense. Uh, but <clears throat> are we buying all the books, or are we buying three loads of books and what happened to the ones I mean I sure and I, and I believe part of that question is around a consumable there is a consumable component to that but we'll pay the price and because that's a consumable so it's used by individual students each year we'll get those materials for those students in the outlier years so it's one price to be able to cover that over that entire period of time and it's from the FY 2020 capital budget so Correct. it has already been allocated and can, other question. And can we put that on our web page so people know that these books are out for review? Okay. You know, so Is that all right? With your permission, Mr. Put Strait, that doing that? Somewhere. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because we'll, we're going to put a link to the right. book okay. so that they can access it online. Okay, that'd be great. So I need a motion to table the novels uh, grades 6 through 12 and the algebra and math 8 books until the May 13th, 2020. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Why, why the, why the math book? I thought we were going to let those go. Because he recommends do, it go, at least being shown out into the public. Just because of the public access. Okay. They've not had access to the building and. Okay, I'll second, I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the motion to table the novels, grades six through 12, algebra and math eight books until the May 13th, 2020 uh, meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Pluski. Yes, ma'am. Next, uh, 6.03 policies for second read. Uh, we have the Title IX policy number 528 and its regulation 528.1. Have we had any, any uh, feedback? We, we have not, Madam President. So the request would be for to go out for the the second read. Yes, um, ma'am. Anyone, anyone have any questions about the Title IX? Having hearing no no response, I call for a motion to send Title IX policy number five twenty eight and its regulation five twenty eight point one out for second read. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to send ten of Title IX policy number 528 and regulation 5281 out for a second read. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. I will second read. Thank you all very much. Uh, school district calendar policy number 647 and regulation 647.1 needs to go out for a second read. Any questions or comments? I have a lot of comments on it, um, but um, I mean, I'll go over all of them. I'll have to send them send them to you guys. If you just look at it, there's there's a lot of typos on it. I I, I don't know. If oh, good gravy! It, it's yeah. It's kind of I'm not sure what happened on the. Oh wow. But I do have some some uh, Mr. Pluski substance questions too that I'll present to you guys. Ah. Uh, your committee. Wow. <clears throat> What I'm reading here, there are so many typos, it's crazy. Um, so, can we table this? Move to table. Uh, we well, can, it's still in the phases, yeah, so you still have phase. time to sure. make whatever okay. sure. corrections. You and I wonder if that's some of that is in the conversion into PDF sometimes. Yep. Possibly. When it, it doesn't get downloaded and gets printed, sometimes there's been mm. uh, some issues with formatting. Yes, I, I could see that. Because okay. I know that you specifically being on a policy committee have, have yes. reviewed that in, uh, reviewed it in length. Um, oh, yeah, so. yeah, you need to, yeah, we need to have somebody clean this up. 
Well, we can and, set but, it up for the, second read regardless. Probably so if you look at it, and I don't have it in front of me like you have it in front of you, and I could click on it, but I wanted to have something on my screen. Um, the PDF, when you change it from the regular Word version to PDF, it changes it. That's why sometimes when you see us with the right. graphs, it changes the, where the letters and the, and the words are. I, mean, I think that's what the case is with that one right. because that's you've gone over it, we've gone over it. Oh, yeah. And so I think that's what the issue is. So when we take it out of uh, PDF, yes. we'll, you'll see that that should clear that up. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I want to mention to ask you about. Is there's, we talked about before and after Labor Day. So we set, we set it up that if, it, if Labor Day is on one, two or three um, September, then we automatically go after. Is that what the decision of the committee was? Um, and then if it's after the 4th of, of September, then they have it the week before. It, it's specifically on, it's on Yeah, your, there are some dates that are in there, Captain Kelly, you are correct. It says if Labor Day falls on September 1 through 4, schools will open after Labor Day. If it falls on or after September 5th, it will open before after. Labor Day. So is that the problem? After right. Labor Day. Right. Think and that was after looking at the calendar for several years out to okay. see where. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't, I didn't do that So because there was some concerns on that. The other one I have, and I don't have a problem with that, um, we also have in there that it would be adopted annually, the calendar, but we do have two-year adoptions at times, so I wouldn't want to be locked into that. But we're always a year ahead, so we have two years approved, but the second year we're always working on the next one year after that, so each year you're going to be looking at, you know, two second. years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it says we're just going to do it annually. We're going to adopt one calendar annually. That was a readout I had. What you are looking for is in the regulation. Yeah, in the what regulation. You, what you had, what you had asked about the the scheduling of the dates, first of the fourth or the right, fifth. Right, that's a regulation. I'm sorry. It's yes. in regulation. Right. Under I under v, I four I yeah yeah. Um, so, but I, I understand that. I wasn't sure how you guys made that decision. Um, then I would want to clarify that under five approval. B, it says the calendar will be adopted annually. So I, I just know that we do do two sometimes. Sometimes we just do one, but. Well, we moved, we moved to two, but we're always working on one. Every year we're yeah. always working on one. Oh, the calendar for input. The calendar will be adopted annually. Oh, I see that. But again, that's under the regulation. The regulation can be changed. Yeah, I'm talking about the regulation. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, yeah. I'm just. It's a policy that we're more focused on as far as. And, and I do have a question. What is the, yeah, I'm on the regulation. Um, under your regulation, you have the uh, 4A3, you discuss two semesters of 90 days each to the middle schools and high schools. What page are you on, Ms. Um, Kevin? I'm on, uh, I'm on uh, Roman numeral 4A3. Which and you are in the regulation. Regulation, yeah. It says the school year will be divided into two grading terms or semesters right. that include at least ninety days each for middle and high. We also have a trimester for the elementary. I just wonder why we didn't address that also. Um, it's kind of empty. Yeah, I'd have to go back to my to my notes, Captain Kelly. Okay, I'm not um, telling you to do it. I'm just you may have a reason. Yeah. Just, well, as far as it could be missing. number four, the guidelines for elementary and middle. I mean, we could with elementary, you have middle and higher. Okay, so semesters. elementary school needs to be included. I would think that would be consistent. Yeah. It would be consistent. Describing the well, this one, that one is talking about the middle four, and high school. We're talking about the four. Marking periods. Correct, which only apply to secondary schools, correct. Which need to be described. It, it does. The school it's, year will be divided into <clears throat> two grading terms or semesters that include at least 90 days each for middle and high schools. So, so we need one for elementary. But we also have a discussion on We are, we, are, we, we also we, have a. We, did, we left out the uh, elementary school as well. Just talking about their four marking periods. Yeah, it's just a regulation. Three. Yeah. yeah, we can, yeah we can add that. That's not. The other okay. thing I have a question on regulation. It, it it's four D D three, and it, it just I didn't understand the federal and state observances of a holiday are on different days. The BOE should determine the date of observance for the public schools within the county. 
I don't really understand all that. Give it to me again. Uh, four, Roman numeral four, uh -huh. D three. Four, D three. Federal and state observances of a holiday are on different days. Mm-hmm. When so we decide which oh, one we pick. Doesn't President's Day float? Stays on the third. It floats two. for everybody. Um, third for state and third federal. Monday of the mm -hmm. second or third Monday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if so, if there is a federal holiday that is, say, we observe it on one day, and I'm I'm just sad that I can't think of uh, Columbus Day, right? Columbus Day isn't always on the same day. It right. sort of it moves, so we would have the opportunity <clears throat> to decide which day we're going to um, to uh, celebrate that day. Okay, that's what that about means. Christmas Eve. Well, that one all that one is always the same. So, well, as far as federal and state, uh, but I'm do saying, federal and state <coughs> differ on, on those? Saturday and I don't Sunday. Think federal and state It's Friday Sunday. and Monday. Yeah, but, but well, we don't have to state say that. We'll say either Friday or Monday. They'll use one of those days. Easter Monday. But usually it's in continuity. Yeah, state but, and federal are usually the same. I've never well, this just gives the LEA a chance of the doing what it wants to, to decide. Okay, and the other one was for B2. It says no testing or assessment should be scheduled on a religious holiday unless doing so would conflict with state or federal assessment requirements. Do we ever have a situation like that? Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, yep. Passover. We, if you don't hold Hanukkah, it, do they conflict with state or federal assessment requirements? That's what it, I've never heard that, but I mean, I've... So, I mean, our community, um, we don't have a significant number of Jewish families that are celebrating no, sorry. Right, um, these holidays. In some places, yes, and, and there is a conflict. So my thinking is that this is left in here in the event that. Well, I, I don't mind it if we don't test. I just don't understand how that would conflict with state or federal assessment requirement so well if we're if we're testing on if we schedule testing on a day that a family is celebrating a religious holiday and their child isn't in school then that would be a conflict that's a conflict if we're doing it the federal or state are doing it it doesn't okay. matter perfect federal example. or state doesn't do testing perfect it's example about, right. is march so is usually when we do all the state testing if yeah. passover fell during that time in March, which it has, we've had we've had Easter and Passover in March before. That would be, if we are mandated to have the state tests on that particular religious holiday, we do. Then you know, if it if it conflicts with that particular holiday, then we would have to change. This it. this allows us to change, change it, it if necessary. The window, right? But that would be that would be the only thing I could think of as far as the and, and again Rosh Hashanah, and and sometimes Yom Kippur, depending if it falls in. September or October, Correct. October is a testing month. Do, do yeah. we allow uh, people to celebrate Rosh Hashanah and Easter? Oh, we don't. <laughs> That's we don't. Right. They can celebrate but whatever they like, yeah, sir. This right. is just taking. a discussion. In yeah, a this, this is just so that we yes. are can allowing ourselves some flexibility. flexibility if we've scheduled testing okay. on one of these holidays and families okay. aren't going to have their children in school. Okay. okay. That's what this is. And the for. last one I had is uh, Roman numeral 4E2. We said if additional days are needed to compensate for emergency closings or inclement weather, we add it to the June closing date. But we, if it's happened earlier, we've taken off, we've, we've offered a Memorial yeah. Day or something, yeah. not the end of June. Yeah, it, it just depends on when it falls and what days we have left in the year. So, so I, would log, if, I wouldn't lock us into doing it at the and end of June. If, I don't think that this is locking us if we are past the days that we could use. So if, if we're not past those days, then we'll use those days. But if we are past those days and there are no other options, then we do add it. We okay. have to add it on. I just didn't want to take away the opportunity to do mm -hmm. presidents like we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. This to doesn't save take that away. June. But like okay. last school year, we've had to add days. Yes. Yeah. And I know because, the, because when we need it, we past. were past yeah. any days that we could use. Correct. So that's why this is there. I just want to make sure we weren't locked into only using them after mm -hmm. June, okay. since that is it. Okay, thank you. So with the editing that needs to be done, um, 
do I have a motion to send um, the school district calendar policy number 647 and regulation 6471 out for second read? I have a motion. I have a second. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote to send the school district calendar policy number 647 and regulation 6471 out for a second read. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Pelusky. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we are at informational items, expenditures report. Mr. Pfister. Thank you, President Harper, Dr. Kane, members of the board. Um, it's time for our monthly expenditure report. Um, the report before you is for information only um, and no action is needed. Um, I consider this uh, a placeholder report for this month. It's, it's where we are, but it's not where we're gonna be. Um, and it's way too soon with everything that we've been talking about tonight about the COVID-19 uh, to even talk about you know some of the projections and where we're going to be because we're just like I said a few weeks into this so um, I think you know having a, a further in-depth discussion of where we will be using this report will be in May where we will see some of the effects of some of the things we need to do and some of the things that we haven't um, and we don't need to do per um, Mr. Smith's comments earlier this evening so um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions, but this is, you know, we pretty much changed our gears, you know, middle of March, and this is just reflective of normal business as we've uh, continued throughout March, but I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. I mean, we, we talked about transportation is gonna be an issue, special ed, we're close on. So none of those things have changed when we had this discussion last month. I'm looking at the categories and so far, we're at where we should be at this time of year as far as expenditures. To, to some degree, I mean, like I said, you know, we're over in transportation. We anticipated that. Now with school closure, you know, that should close that gap. Absolutely. Special ed, um, some of the things with the non-publics and all the legislation and all the waivers that have come down and yet to come down, it's going to affect those categories. So that's why I said this is a placeholder document for where we are, okay. but we'll have better projections and better ideas of uh, where we're going to end of the year by next month. Okay. Any questions, anyone? I have a question. The out-of-county placements. Yes, ma'am. I'm sure they're doing an online distance learning experience, so we, we are still paying tuition. So we, we are paying tuition for the first, for the 10 days. Uh, we will pay 100%, even though our kids were not there. And I believe uh, the state, uh, MSDE, and the non-publics have come to like an MOU kind of agreement where we pay 85% of the per diem rate going forward, depending on what kind of delivery model that they are instituting. And then the related services, so that's their per diem rate. So when that child goes there, this is the rate we pay. And then there are services added onto that, and that could fluctuate anywhere between 85 and 100%, such that if the child is receiving that full service, as if we weren't closed, I believe it's 100%. If there's an online delivery model, it would be 85%. So, that, so yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. but, but we will save in our transportation costs because the child's not being transported. Correct. And that's hourly and mileage. And overtime and all that. Yes, sir. And you say we're, yes. save, we're saving the 15%. Because we're not physically that. having yes. them use the facility. Yeah, and again, it depends on, and I don't know, you know, if these models have changed. You know, if that child going there every day and now they're only getting those services, you know, several times a week as opposed to every day. I don't know how that affects the actual cost. It's said we're we're just into this, and I think that edict came down just, just last a couple week. Of days ago. Yeah, yeah, about the 85. So yeah, there there there's an opportunity, but again, it, we we talk about saving money versus not going over. That's the other discussion that we'll have to have. Is our special need? providers balancing that curriculum for those out-of-county placements or are their out-of-county placements providing totally? I'd have to defer that to Ms. Smith, you know, as far as what the, what the service model is. And I also know that some of the related services that are in-county contracted services, those things are also continuing as well. But as far as the non-public, I, I would have to defer that to Ms. Smith. Okay. And I would think in May, first meeting of May, we'll have a better snapshot. In June, we should have a per very accurate for the end of the year. Yeah, I hope to have an end of the year projection for the first meeting in May, okay. because we, honestly, considering what's happened, we, we wouldn't be able to make any noticeable adjustments if we waited until June. Okay. And, if we have and, to and, and at, under and normal circumstances, we'd be having that conversation tonight. And if we had to even have a special meeting in May, yeah. so we can make these adjustments because, you know, a lot of things are going to be moving as we 
as you find out what's happening. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Okay, and we have a transfer notice, sir. Yes, so in, let me pull that out of my, so um, as you know, we, we have a, a, a transfer notice that goes over whenever we change uh, information between um, or within state categories. I'm looking for my copy. I'm sorry, I got three or four things going here. Here we go. Um, and, the, and they are minor in all instances. So with the student information services, and, and as we've talked throughout the budget process, there are places within our budget that there are things that we were required to do that generally we don't budget for in that particular line item. And we hope to find savings somewhere throughout the year to help offset that. This happens to be one of them in the category administration. That is our sending two of, two of our three staff members for the Power School University training that keeps us up to date with all of the information systems related to again the student information system so we had some salary savings there and again this is a placeholder document because these transfers were done in february and march before we had the, Fe the march 13th shutdown some of this is related to required travel that those conferences have now been canceled so some of this end up when we get to the june may end up being undone but because we made the transfers in those months that we're discussing tonight I have to present them to you as information but they're very likely to be undone because the travel is not occurring. Correct. And that's what's happened in the first one with administration. That was, again, to send our uh, two staff members to require training to keep up with the student information system. And they didn't get to go. And, and they didn't get to go. So, uh, okay. So why are we doing it anyhow then? Because Cause we made the in-category transfer back in February. And by state law, 5202, I have to inform you of these transfers in category. So we didn't have the money in meetings and conferences. We had to make the reservations that created a negative. Well, we want to, I don't want negatives. So I found where we had positives and could transfer money down there. Okay, all things being equal, yes, we would have spent that money where we transferred it to. Now that conference is, is canceled. So now I have extra money where I don't need it. So I could either undo it or I could leave it there. For now. For now. But, but next month, it should be undone, right? I oh. wouldn't think so. I mean, are you talking about the conference? Yeah. Or, oh, no, yeah. I don't think the conference is going to be. No, no, the money should go back out, back out of conference. Well, it's, it's a savings in one, or I have a savings in the other. So we transferred it. Now we're not going to need it. There's no need to transfer it back because I had already realized the savings prior. We would use it for something else if we need to, as oh, Mr. Yeah. Smith alluded to. At the, end, at the end of the month in June, end of June, yeah. Okay. All of this will be a wash, but right now he needs to balance his bu yeah. books by the month. Yeah. And that's I mean, what all of these are. Yeah, and it's, instead of spending the $4,000 to send them on the conference, that might be $4,000 we buy more jet packs with. Because we don't need it in salaries and we don't need it in conferences, we can do something else with that. Correct. So I understand you to say you have the, the latitude to move money from one category to an entirely different category? No, sir, within oh. the category, yeah. the object levels within the category. And this is as a courtesy to the county commissioners, letting them know that we are transferring in category. Yeah. For now. If it was a cross category, what I call cross or between categories, that then, would require your approval. Correct. Before we could do those transfers but and our, then county approval. Yeah. So, Mr. Pfister, getting back to the vein of transfer to meeting and conferences to $7,200, that meeting did not happen. Correct. Okay. For so, the state transportation, I so believe that one was canceled. So we're leaving it there right now to balance the books for February. And it's all within the same category, so it, you know, yes. it's only because by law I have to we tell have to you. Um, and the student services, again, that was just some balancing. Um, and then Graysonville took some of their MOI money and actually purchased a laminator. Okay. Um, and we have to um, uh, capitalize that asset, so I had to move it from materials to uh, equipment. Do you expect? in the normal order of business that in May, like I remember some years ago, we had significant dollar amounts transferred from one category to another. Actually, it came out of uh, teacher salaries and benefits and it moved uh, to transportation. Mm -hmm. we, we don't expect that type of move mm -hmm. or so, we don't know. Um, at this point, I would have to say we will probably will not need to transfer as much. There will still be some transfers. I could tell you that if COVID-19 had not happened, we would be transferring some significant money but into both special ed and transportation. But with both of those in flux, as we've discussed tonight, 
we may not have to transfer at all, and we may have to, may not have to transfer as much. But there will be categorical transfers presented to you in May. In, in, With our, in our budget, we're still going to have money to be put into that uh, fund in case we get nasty surprises in insurance costs and so forth. There's, I think it's a, in the budget, it's like $500,000 supposed to be there. Are you talking about the rainy day fund? No, I'm talking about a fund that we're required by GASB to put money aside. So if OPEB. Yeah. OK, thank you. OK, so OPEB is not a line item within our budget. We've always been funding it with fund balance. As we accumulate a little bit of fund balance from a couple years operating funds, then we might come to you and say, hey, let's put some money over an OPEB. But as far as having a line item budgeted, which we should, that says, OK, every year we're going to commit $100,000 of our budget, our operating budget, to fund the OPEB. We haven't gotten to that point yet. Well, I think we should try to get there. Well, uh, this the same insurance policy covering our active employees, our teachers, superintendents, is covering retirees, and they're retiring. And the older we get, the more we tend to rely on health yeah. insurance. So it, at, at this point, it's never an issue. Are we never going to have enough money to pay that bill? And the answer is we'll always have the money to, to pay for that bill. The idea with the new regulation is saying rather than it being a pay as you go, it's this fund is going to set up to pay that, that if the Queen Anne's County Public Schools or the Queen, or Queen Anne's County government ever went out of business, there would be money. Of course, we know that's never going to happen. But there will be money sitting over here to continue to pay those benefits. I and remember that's what you're referring to. I remember 2008, there wasn't money, and a yeah. whole bunch of people, 100 people, lost their jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But we, we would have the funding to continue that. SB requires you to fund. Yes. And I, I you know, I dare uh, the next government authority that has to look at this budget to cut that out, because that is a killer. Well, it's not there. It's not. We, we did not Stand propose any dollar amount for that budget and this year. And there's another piece that we got nailed on uh, three years ago, and that's a big pension cost because somebody in control of the pension uh, financing changed the uh, the criteria. Uh, you know, pension costs are pretty simple. It's money earned versus benefits paid. But the more benefits that get paid, you know, you know mistakes were made. Mm -hmm. but and that one's out outside just, of our control. Maybe I'm just being Maryland State retirement. Throwing a, a canoe across a choppy lake. But well. okay. Any other questions about this letter that needs to be sent? This does not require a board vote. Nope. No, ma'am, it does not. Um, the next one, the notice trans <coughs> transfer notice within. That is just showing this. Is that what you're? Yes, the transfer notice. We do not have a transfer request this month. Um, so this is just we had for anticipated one, and, except when all you know what broke loose. Okay, so that was just for information purposes. All right, great. Thank you so much, okay. sir. Okay. Thank you. Um, Eight point oh one community participation, public comment. As I understand from Mrs. Wright, there is no one else. I do have a letter from. Um, <clears throat> some bus contractors, our bus contractors. This is written um, by uh, LNS, um, Bus Service Bay Area, Northern County Exchange and QA, um, Queen Anne's Bus Lines, our four LLCs. And the letter reads as follows, Dear QACPS board members, <clears throat> while we are in very difficult times, we know you have some very important decisions to make about our school system and how things should operate going forward. As, de as dedicated school bus contractors for Queen Anne's County, we're concerned also about our survival going forward. We have many things to consider as business operators of our school buses. Items such as bus loan payments, insurance payments, periodic maintenance, tires, summer inspection of our buses will, inc will continue for us. But we're also concerned about our families and our income to support them. 
For many of us, bus driving is our only source of making a living. Typically, this time of year, we're working very hard, not only doing our regular bus routes, but also coordinating and conducting school field trips, band and sports trips, which typically make our spring very busy. We eagerly conduct these trips every spring because this is our extra income to get us through our summer months when we receive no pay. This income will be lost this spring. <clears throat> This time of year, we're also preparing for our spring bus inspection, doing regular maintenance, repairing, uh, repairs, replacing tires and cleaning activities after a long winter. Even after the recent initial closing of school, we very quickly sanitized our buses in expectation of returning to school. As spring starts to close, we have to very quickly perform our summer maintenance inspection to have them ready by August 1st bus inspection. Long story short, even though the wheels are not turning, we still have expenses to consider as, bus, as business owners. Even though we are not at the end of the school year, this is the time of year that we prepare for many bus repairs and also to financially prepare for the summer months without pay in order to support our families. We would like to ask for your support to make us whole with our school bus contract for the remainder of this school year if needed. We realize that these are unprecedented times, but your support will ensure that every school bus driver will return once this passes. And it's signed sincerely, school bus contractors of Queen Anne's County, just like I mentioned, LNS Bus Service Incorporated, Bay Area Transportation LLC, Northern County Exchange LLC, and Queen Anne's Bus Lines LLC. Thank you, Dr. Kane. Quite well. So, what is the amount of money they want? Well, that this we'll, is public that, comment. That, that this is public comment. It's just just public comment. I just Dutch just know. Yes, and we're we'll, we're going into closed session. Um, nine point oh one future uh, school board meetings. As I have originally proposed, changing our April fifteenth meeting, which is our normally scheduled meeting, to April twenty second. Do I have any comment on that? Anyone have any conflict? Yeah, we have nothing. What day going of the week this. is it? Wednesday. Sorry, it's it is a Wednesday, April twenty second, okay. rather than the fifteenth. Wednesday or clear. It's in our it is in our handbook. We have to have it on the third Wednesday of the month. However, because we are doing this preemptively and with plenty of notice, we can change it to April twenty second if I have a motion to do so. I, I think it's a uh, good idea because it gives the staff extra week to update us on what's happening, and you know, for us to try to make decisions and staff. And Dr. Kane, uh, to inform us on everything, it's that much more time. She'll have to do it, and things change by the minute now. <laughs> so I think it makes a lot of lot of sense to move it to the 22nd. So do I have a motion to uh, change our April 15th, 2020 work session to April 22nd, 2020? So moved. I have a first and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? I call for the vote on the motion to change the April 15th, 2020 meeting to April 22nd, 2020. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you all very much. The meeting after that, uh, as I hope everyone knows, uh, will not be the first week of May, but will be on May 13th. We are hoping that the county commissioners will still be having their um, town hall meetings May 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. We changed our uh, school board meeting to May 13th. I would subsequently then ask that we move our third week to the following uh, week up. So make, again, the fourth week of May, if, and if everybody can make a note of that, and we can we can do a vote on that later. Um, so May 13th after April 22nd. Hopefully we'll be back in school by then. Moving it to what? May 27th would be the fourth. I'm sorry, May 13, you're moving to where? No, May 13th is fine. Thanks. You, you want to add the May 27th. I want to add the May 27th if that is work session. If it work, yeah, if that works for everyone. I, I guess because the 20th is a work session. So why would you, you just want to slide that to the 27th? 27th, correct. Sure. Well, let, let, we can tentatively do that. And as we meet on April 22nd, if we find out. Well, and when we meet on the 13th, we can also decide then. Right. We don't have to do it right now. We're, We're giving ourselves enough. On the 13th. I thought you said you substituted the. We did. May 6th, we moved to May 13th. Okay. The commit county, I apologize. The county commissioners' meetings supposedly are May fourth, fifth, and sixth. They're town <coughs> halls. That is why we moved last month our sixth May sixth meeting to May thirteenth. We can at the May thirteenth meeting move the May twentieth to May to May twenty seventh, if all things being equal. Just trying to be pre, you know preemptive about that. 
Any other business? Oh, I did have one more thing of business, um, which I have spoken to uh, Captain Kelly about since she is our May representative. MABE is uh, the resolutions committee is asking the boards to review the MABE's current continuing resolutions and to submit any proposed changes and new continuing resolutions to the resolutions committee. Uh, I have a letter here um, describing the whole process. I have contacted Captain Kelly since she is our uh, MABE liaison to look us over, report anything to us. If anyone also wants to um, take Mr. a look Anderson at it. Anderson said he has some input, so. Okay, so that, I mean, the two of you can talk about that sure. and then give a report at the May meeting because sure. they are asking for. Oh, I put down June meeting. <clears throat> you want to do it at the June meeting? That's great. Because the deadline isn't until June 17th, so perfect. All right, I appreciate that. Um, anything else business-wise before we go into closed session? Nothing? Okay. Mr. Smith? In pursuit of general provisions of Article 3-305 and 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County will meet in closed session at 9.20 p.m. to discuss the point in employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials who with this body has a jurisdiction to perform administrative function and detect matters related to negotiations. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote of the motion to go into closed session. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. We will be back after closed session. Thank you so much. All right, there you go. And we're back at open session. Uh, 11.01, our HR report. Do I have a motion to accept the HR report as presented in closed session? I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to accept the HR report as presented in closed session. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. 11.02. Do I have a motion to accept the amendment to the LLC bus contractors negotiated agreement as discussed in closed session? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing what? none. <laughs> I have to, uh, I apologize. I have to make an am amendment to the agenda. I, I have to amend the agenda. Uh, do I have a motion to amend the agenda to accept 11.02, the bus driver report? Contract. Moved. moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Do I, any questions or comment on the motion? I am accepting. I'm, all, in all in favor of accepting the motion to amend the agenda to include 11.02. The bus driver report, all in favor say aye. 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 Motions, no. Ayes have it, motions carried. Thank you, Dr. Kane. 11.02, bus driver report. Now, I have a motion to accept the amendment to the LLC bus contractors negotiating agreement as discussed in closed session. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Say no, the ayes have it, the motion is carried. Thank you all very much for your patience. And with that, I wish you all Please be safe and please be healthy. I move, Practice. To, I move to adjourn. Practice social distancing. <laughs> do I have a motion to close the open session? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to get the heck out of here. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it. Thank you all very much. Thank you, QAC TV. Mm -hmm.